Welcome to Hadley Town Meeting. What's today's date? April 2nd, 2019. And we are here in the Hopkins Academy Cafetorium, bringing you live town meeting. If you're watching, you should be here. Yeah. Let's see if anybody wants to talk to us. Hi, have you ever been on Hadley Media? Where's Hadley? You're going to be on the TV. Where's Hadley? Hadley, Massachusetts. Oh, that's where we are. <laughs> Thanks for coming to town meeting. Uh, is there anything at town meeting that you're particularly interested in? Try to keep the uh, taxes down. Any of the Warren articles you want to comment on? I haven't really looked at them yet, so I can't say one or the other. I think I forgot to ask you your name. Uh, uh, Rich Chamura. Rich, well, uh, nice to meet you. What's your favorite? What's your favorite place in Hadley? Uh, Texas uh, Steakhouse. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, Joy Town Meeting. Yeah, you too. Okay, that went well. Hey there. Want to be on Hadley Media? Oh, come on. No, I'm actually going to go see someone up there. It's not so bad. Almost everybody survives. Oh, you're getting this? Actual emotion. Hey, you guys, you want to be on Hadley Media? What has the Mother's Club got for us tonight? We have some snacks here tonight, and we are very honored because we are being uh, honored tonight with the dedication of the uh, town report. 75 years? 75 years of serving the school children and the community of Hadley. Well, I look forward to the snacks all the time. All right. Any particular thing at town meeting you're interested in tonight? Um, so I'm interested about the uh, marijuana stuff, what's going on with that. Um, really didn't get a chance to read too much of it because we're getting ready for our 75th anniversary tea on Sunday. So been a little preoccupied with that. What time is that and where is it? That is at the Most Holy Redeemer Church from 1 to 3. And we have right now over 60 members are going to be attending. So we're very excited. Well, great. That's Thank 60 you. more people than are probably watching. But <laughs> we'll see if it helps. So, how are you doing? All right, Andrew. How are you? I'm good. Uh, anything in town meeting tonight you're particularly interested in? Well, I'm here as part of the, uh, the, uh, the Park and Rec Commission, and we're here to represent the two articles that are on the road today. So, uh, both dealing with Zaturka Park. One is to get an additional... Uh, Additional monies to help wrap up that, uh, this phase of the project, and also to uh, convert that land to uh, a, a, a true park. Apparently, it's never been uh, classified as such. And that's Article 25. And a uh, shout out to the Mothers Club for supporting town meeting, uh, meeting after meeting. And it's uh, great to come out and, and provide a little snack for people who don't get a chance to eat and uh, uh, coming straight from work. Good. Did I ever ask you what your favorite place in Hadley was? You haven't asked me that yet. Consider yourself asked. Okay, uh, my favorite place in Hadley, uh, within the borders. There's a lot of great parts in, in Hadley. Uh, let's see, wonderful, uh, wonderful stores, wonderful shops. But I have to probably say my backyard. That's my favorite place in Hadley. I'm surprised how many people say that. Well, have a good town meeting. Okay, so far so good. Should we keep moving? So we have 10 minutes to the official start. Hey, you want to be on Hadley Media? So what's your name? Mary Fair. Hi, Mary. And um, do you have anything particular you're interested in tonight's town meeting? The CPA awards and the marijuana especially. Care to give an opinion on any of those? I think it's great the town has the CPA funds to um, pay for things that we probably wouldn't call for long I don't think we've come up with anything perfect, but I think having something is very important. Okay, we'll have a good town meeting. Uh, what's your favorite place in Hadley? Okay, thanks. Enjoy it. So far, so good. To be in Hadley Media? I'll try not to take a person. I might be 
So we still have five minutes to go before town meeting officially starts. Uh, you could easily get here um, if you're watching at home. If you don't come, you don't get to vote, you can't complain. Be careful of the table. I will if you want, I'll interview you if you want me to. Okay. I don't want to detract from my popularity. Limited. Do you find that uh, being out of town politics has helped your popularity? No. Uh, I'll shut it off. Okay, we're back. We're back live at the Hopkins Academy Cafetorium. Hi there, welcome to the town meeting. Are there any issues you're particularly interested in? Uh, no, actually it's television. It's not radio. It's like radio, but with pictures. Okay, let's see if we can get anybody else to talk to us. Oh, let's see what number we're up to. Can we come? Hey there. You want to be in the media? No? No? What about if we uh, shoot you into the lights and you're in silhouette? Uh, did you know what number they were up to? 100. Oh, 100. Oh, so we already have enough for quorum. Which means we'll be starting very soon. Okay, so without having anybody, uh, we have a hundred, so that's good. I always thought we should give a prize to whoever's the one hundred person. You know, sometimes you don't get on. Would you like to be on Hadley Media? I suppose I already am. Right. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Jim Didkevitz. Hi, Jim. Do you have any issues you're particularly interested in for tonight's town meeting? Yeah, I'm here uh, to hear the discussion of, I think it's Article 26, uh, the cannabis cultivation uh, question. Uh, and I'm here as someone who was born in Hadley and lived in Hadley, and also someone who's been a lifelong farmer. And I'm here to voice my concerns that the town should leave a place for farmers in this uh, new market. Okay, well, thanks for your opinion. Uh, before you go, what's your favorite place in Hadley? Well, that'd have to be the mountain. Okay, thanks. Hi there. Uh, Thank you. We're on Hadley Media. Yeah, we uh, have a late day at school. Is that the same thing for Hadley Media? No? I don't know, most people want to be on television, don't you think? Is it really television? I mean, that's the question. So if you are watching live uh, here from the Hadley Hopkins Academy Cafetorium, you could still make it here for town meeting. We won't be uh, uh, starting for a few minutes, and we won't be ending anytime soon. So come on down and exercise your right to vote. Some exciting Warren articles coming up, and um, should be some lively discussions. Let's see what is going on. I'm not sure uh, whether people are avoiding this side of the room or they just don't want to talk to me. 
Is that what this warrant is about? At this about? rate, I may have time for my uh, soliloquies from Hamlet, which I prepared for the town election and didn't get a chance to say. Hi there, we're in Hadley Media. You know, How are you doing? I got my number. Yeah. Any issues at town meeting you want to talk about? Anything you want to talk Everything about? Exactly. No? This could be your chance to be memorialized forever in digital video. I don't know. Is it me? I took a shower today. I used soap. Here comes somebody. Uh, you can tell. When they don't make eye contact, you can tell. You looked at me twice, I'm going in. Hi, we're at Happy Media. We're on Happy Media. Have any um, particular interest in tonight's town meeting? Well, you'll see it in its rawest form, that's for sure. Um, what's your name? Cheryl Curtis. And what's your favorite place in Happy? Question. Town hall. Town hall. Okay, thanks. Well, enjoy it. Okay, I think we're about to start, so let's cut to the front of the room. We have a quorum, but we still have people filtering in. We have about five minutes till we get started. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have a quorum. Okay, so it looks like we're going to uh, start in about five minutes. It's uh, Randy Iser's first um, town meeting as moderator. So if you're he's very excited. Hey there, you like to be on Happy Media? No? Soon we will have the Pledge of Allegiance and we will get started. But like I said, any place in town, you could be here in 10 minutes. You don't want to miss the budget, that's the most exciting part. Okay. So we're in the final few minutes of the town meeting countdown. Hey there. Let's see if anybody... Anybody else wants to be on that There. We're on Hadley Media. Do you have any uh, particular interest in tonight's town meeting? Uh, just mainly I uh, want to see how the marijuana vote comes out for uh, the town regulations. Uh, I'd like to see it to pass because uh, other than that, it would be the state governing you know, the total, uh, you know, whatever discussed about the uh, marijuana and uh, doors and uh, just, you know, distribution. I'd rather see it go in the town, you know, the town so they would be uh, controlling all that. I'd rather see that in the state. Should be an interesting debate. What's your name? Uh, Leonard Kokoski. And Leonard, what's your favorite place in Hadley? So, it's the north end of Hadley. It's where all the prime farmland is, and uh, it's rich growing soil, and it's a great place to live. It's quiet, it's nice. Well, enjoy town meeting. Okay, we're almost started. How are you? We're on live on Hadley Media. Hi, Hadley Media. How are you? Any particular interest in town meeting uh, tonight? Always town meeting interest. I'm so glad to see such a, and many people here today at it. It's a great interest. I was one number 128 coming in. There's still plenty of people coming in. So, you know, as I usually sit in the front row, I'm not in the front row tonight. So I get a chance to enjoy it from a little different perspective. And I want to say hi to my babysitter out there. Today. She was just watching you on TV, and she said, if you get a chance to say hi when you get there, say hi to me. Excellent, excellent. Hey. And my most famous place in Hadley is uh, North Hadley Divine Farms. It's been in the family for years and years and years. As a former moderator, do you have any advice to give to Randy since it's his first? I sent Randy an email today. I told him he was going to be fantastic at it. He's a great guy. He knows a lot of people in town, very level, even-headed, handed guy. He's been on different committees with him in town, and I see how just you know committed he is to just getting the system and the process to work right so everybody has a chance to speak. Um, I reached out to him a month ago, and I said, I have some information. If you care at all to get it, he stopped by and picked it up, and uh, 
uh, hopefully uh, it, it helps this time be a little easier tonight. I remember my first night uh, being a moderator. I was pretty nervous, but a lot of people helped me along too. So we do a great process. I, I, I saw the agenda. I don't think it's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of opinions voiced tonight, but I don't see anything particularly controversial. So there's no lows tonight to talk about. Well, Any town meeting without a fist fight is a good one, right? That is, that is. Thanks for the interview. Thank Enjoy you. it. Thank you. Okay, so I can see on the far side of the stage that the moderator is talking to the uh, to somebody, and it doesn't look like they're going to start any second. So we still have a few more minutes to stretch, and that'll be fine. Oh, here we go, right in front of you. We're on Hadley Media. How are you, how are you doing? Um, uh, how's your time on the planning board so far? So far, it has been eventful. I've only been to one meeting, but the, my second one is this coming Tuesday. So, okay, any issues at town meeting you're particularly interested in tonight? Well, I'm certainly hoping that we pass the. Um, marijuana bylaw that they've put so much work into and so much thought into and I think everyone understands that it's a vote to control not a vote whether we have it or not so I'm hoping that'll pass with the two-thirds. Um, what, what's your favorite place in Hadley? Favorite place in Hadley? Well depending on the season right now actually all year it's probably the North Hadley Sugar Shack. Okay well enjoy town meeting. All right. Uh, hi there. We're on. We're on Hadley Media. Uh, maybe I can rope in one of these people. Good evening, everybody. Okay, we are starting. Enjoy town meeting, everyone. It is seven o six p.m. We have a quorum. I will call this meeting to order. Return of the warrant shows that it has been properly served. Please stand as you are able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. since our last town meeting, including Joyce West, and those victims and their families who have suffered from recent tragic events, world events. Town Clerk, Jessica Spankable, Finance Committee, Amy Feiden, Valerie Hood, and Kathy Zaturka. And I am your moderator, Randy Eiser. This evening, I acknowledge the Hadley Mothers Club for providing refreshments for this meeting. Feel free to visit them at the appropriate time at the back of the room. The collection they make this evening is going to the Hopkins Academy Boys and Girls State. I thank the Mothers Club also for their donation of a laptop computer that was used for the public forum held here last week regarding the town meeting. Also, I thank Hadley Media for recording this and most all the meetings that occur in town. In our presence this evening, we have our distinguished state representative, Dan Carey. Mr. Carey would like to say a few words.
Thank you very much. I'll be very brief. I just wanted to get up and say hello and thank you for the opportunity to join you this evening and to be your state representative. In my short time so far since January, I've really enjoyed my visits to Hadley. I'm at the Senior Center uh, uh, once a month and then I hold town uh, public office hours throughout town in different places. We've had them at the library. There's some coming up at the end of the month at Town Hall. So please do uh, come by, say hello, give us a call, let us know how my office can help you guys out. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Memorial Day Parade. So thank you very much. Take care. At this time, the select board would like to dedicate the town report. So, whoever wants to do it. Do you want to come up here or go down? Okay. 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 It is with great honor that I have the uh, dedication of the Hadley Town book. And the first one is going to be to the Hadley Mothers Club. So if there's anybody in the audience that has been a member, present or past present, I wish they would please stand up. to the town of Hadley. By this dedication, we acknowledge the many, many contributions this organization has made to our town over the past 74 years. I have to say 74 years because it's a 2018 book. So we're now in 2000, 2019, and um, it is 75 years. But the Hadley Mothers Club was started in 1944. The purpose was for young mothers to socialize, to discuss concerns and common interests, and to render public service. They began by establishing a kindergarten class in 1945, and they continued their support by donating classroom materials in the following year. Today, the Mothers Club mission is to still to serve Hadley by providing opportunities and support for our youth and members of the community. They fulfill the mission every day in a wide variety of ways through fundraising events and programs that support scholarships to Hadley graduating seniors by supporting Girls and Boys State, sports banquet, band trips, senior trips, by providing startup funds for Girl and Boy Scout troops, and much more. They also sponsor Candidates Night to bring together townspeople with candidates running for political offices, a project that helps people make informed voting decisions. Mothers Club meetings provide informative and fun activities for all members, including workshops of internet safety, town planning, information, self-defense, nutrition, equipment, swaps, and gardening. These meeting events are thoughtfully organized to serve the needs of the people of the town of Hadley and enrich their members. To support their events and programs, Mothers Club members have donated countless hours and skills in various fundraising efforts such as the Hadley Holiday Fair, Recycling Day, Hillside Pizza, the Giving Grill at Whole Foods, and Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools Road Race, where they staff the large stations. For over 74 years, the Mothers Club has been a continuous presence, looking out for our children and our community, having embodied volunteerism and community spirit, for generous giving, and for continued service to the town of Hadley. Having Mothers Club deserves recognition and our thanks. So thank you. Let me do their proclamation also. The Commonwealth.
of the Massachusetts the town of Hadley by the Board of Selectmen Proclamation 2019. Whereas the Hadley Mothers Club was founded in 1944 for young mothers to gather socially and discuss subjects of common interest and render public service in Hadley, Massachusetts. Whereas the Hadley Mothers Club established the first kindergarten class in Hadley in 1945. Whereas the Happy Mothers Club supports Happy Schools and community through their activities and fundraisers. Whereas the Happy Mothers Club has supported a candidate's night for the following residents of Hadley as opportunities to meet candidates of local elections. Whereas the Happy Mothers Club has earned and respect and affection of a host of family, friends, students, and residents of the town of Hadley. Now therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, do hereby deem and an honor and a pleasure to extend this proclamation to Hadley Mothers Club on their 75th anniversary with sincere congratulations and best wishes for many happier, productive years. So thank you. We have another dedication of the town report. John Marshkevich is going to give that one. The second dedication of the town report is for an individual. Town Alley is proud to dedicate the 2018 annual town report to our outstanding citizens who have contributed so much to the town of Hadley, Mr. Edward Goodkevitz. Uh, Ed is from a family of five siblings who grew up in Hadley. He learned at a young age the importance of volunteering for the fire department. As his family and neighbors would respond to emergencies, emergency calls, often running from their family fields to help their neighbors. After graduating from Hopkins Academy in 1971, Edward immediately joined the Hadley Fire Department. Ed attended Springfield Technical Community College and Anna Marie College, and then began his career with Western Mass Electric. Ed was appointed as a lieutenant in 1976 and was often recalled, recalled as first volunteer EMT in the town. During his time as fire, during his time as a firefighter, Ed continued learning all that he could and sharing his knowledge with other firefighters, including myself. He received several letters of thanks from neighboring communities for his assistance during mutual aid calls, in particular from Northampton and Amherst. Ed served as first assistant chief from 1997 until his retirement from the call force in 2013. Ed recently retired from a long career at Western Mass Electric Company as a plant operator, but he has not retired from his long time hobby of baking. Did you bring any brownies or cookies this evening? <laughs> As Tom Hadley began planning for a new fire substation, Ed answered Hadley's call once again, serving on a building committee. We thank Ed for answering the call of service for Tom Hadley for over 40 years. Thank you. Ed. present the Fred Oakley Award for Volunteerism. There are two recipients tonight. David Phillips going to hand out the first one. The Fred Oakley Junior Award was established by the Select Board to honor members of the community who embody the spirit of volunteerism and service to the town of Hadley. The first co-recipient for this year is Leona Chimura. Leona was born and raised in Hadley uh, to Edward Waskevitz and Helen Sadlowski. She is the oldest and only girl of five. 
Leona was no stranger to hard work, including harvesting tobacco, having grown up working on her parents' farm. She attended Hadley schools and was a member of the Hopkins Academy graduating class in 1960. In 1964, she married her high school sweetheart, Rich Jamara. Leona and Rich were blessed with three children, David, Debbie, and Steve. Active in the Most Holy Redeemer Church, formerly the Holy Rosary Church, Leona volunteered as a CCD teacher for many years. She particularly takes pride in knowing she taught hundreds of children how to properly say the rosary and has sponsored numerous students being confirmed. She is a Eucharistic minister delivering communion to homebound parishioners and those that reside in nursing homes. Following a number of years working as a dental hygienist, she eventually retired from the Registry of Deeds. Leona also works in Hopkins Academy cafeteria and also with the after school program. It is here that she was able to continue her positive influence on another generation of Hadley students. Known to many as the Polish mom, Leona is famous for hosting pierogi dinners and special deliveries of the best fresh strawberry sauce and vanilla ice cream, which has propelled her into a league of her own. Leona has been a champion for the youth of Hadley, cheering at sporting events, school concerts, and graduations. She truly has touched the hearts of hundreds of children. She especially enjoys time with her two grandsons, Marco and Angelo, and beloved Corky. She is an avid gardener of both veg of veggies and flowers and looks forward to her trip to Poland. Never underestimate Leona or the power of Golunki. <laughs> Leona's many positive words, special notes, cards, and uplifting spirit and smile, and smile is the epitome of the character of the town of Hadley, uh, that the town of Hadley wishes to represent <coughs> its residents and visitors. So I'd like to present this copy of the annual report to Leona. Linda several years ago after retiring in order to be closer to family in this area. Almost immediately they joined the Friends of the Goodwin Memorial Library and became deeply involved with supporting the library programs, fundraising, and efforts to design and build the Newtown Library. Dennis served with distinction on the Library Planning and Design Committee and later on the Library Building Committee, bringing his enthusiasm, knowledge of finances, and sharp pencil to the process until his passing late in 2018. Dennis was born in Northampton. He was a graduate of Middlebury College and Columbia University. Dennis served in Vietnam with the U.S. Army and worked as a CPA, retiring as CFO of Palmer and Dodge in Boston. Along with his passion for gardening, helping make the new Hadley Library a reality, Disney World, genealogy, his greatest pleasure by far was the time he spent with his family and his grandchildren. So we'd like to present uh, this to Dennis's family. I don't know if Linda or anybody from the family is here this evening to receive this. Chair Christian Stanley would like to give a state of the town report. Uh, good evening and thank you for coming out tonight. I'm excited for the 2019 annual town meeting. But before we start, moderator Iser is granting me an opportunity to give you a quick update. I just want to provide you with a snapshot of our 2019 accomplishments. Uh, quick budget outline for 2020 and some strategic goals I have for my term as chair of the select board through April of next year. Uh, our first 2019 accomplishments, uh, 
we implemented the new ambulance service this year, which has been a really great contribution to the town, really fast response times and great service from what I hear. We've hired a new DPW director, who you'll hear from later tonight most likely, Christopher Okafor. We've made significant progress on all three new facility projects in town. The Senior Center completed all approvals necessary to start construction, and we've selected Forge Construction as the general contractor. Foundations for the building are going in as we speak, and passing of the Article 23 tonight will allow us to start running electricity to the site. The library has also completed all its approvals necessary to start construction. It is out to bid right now, and we're hoping to select a contractor for that project in early June. The fire substation, also well underway, and with all its approvals met, is out to bid, and we'll be selecting a general contractor for that in mid-June. The Hooker School is no longer home to the Senior Center. The Senior Center is now in its temporary home at the Most Holy Redeemer Church. Hadley Media is on the second floor of the library. Planning Board and Parks and Rec, who are all in the Hooker School, are now located in Town Hall. Hooker School is essentially ready for demolition once the library project moves forward. We have been awarded numerous grants, including the Compact IT grant, which will allow for electronically organizing town documentation onto the laser fiche system. Uh, with, this is in collaboration with Northampton and hoping to get a lot of the paper files that are currently in Town Hall uh, into an electronic <coughs> format. We have implemented a system to make billing in the collector's office more efficient. We're also awarded a public-private partnership grant to repair a water line near the Mountain View Apartments. And hopefully that collaboration will open the door to future opportunities with the Baker administration. The town collector and treasurer positions have been approved to transition from elected to appointed positions. The treasurer is now officially appointed as the elected term expired in April of 2019, and collector will be appointed after April of 2021. We have begun to implement a new community communication system, Nixle, um, and there are many more accomplishments in all departments. We have many talented and dedicated employees, board members, committee members throughout the town, and I want to thank you all for your service to the town in the past year. For the fiscal year 2020 budget, I just have a quick list of account balances, so if you want to take your pencils out, I'll give those to you now. Stabilization is $1,930,604. Capital stabilization is at $5,775. We've got our reserve funds, water reserves, $1,112,447. Sewer reserves, $129,117. Hadley Media Reserves, $181,582. Sewer impact is at $256,527. And Community Preservation Act is at $2,089,129. In the warrant tonight, Articles 1 through 6, except Article 4, which has been removed around the consent agenda. For approving the omnibus budget, we have one article for the general budget and one article for the enterprise budgets combined, sewer, water, Hadley media. The general budget is focusing on town hall. Most of the budget is flatly funded other than contracted wage increases. We have added a human resources position in the budget, and if approved tonight, we'll start, um, start to advertise that position. We were unable to find funding for a full-time financial management position, but we have allocated the treasurer more hours to take on a more involved strategic finance role. We have done our best to provide more administration, administrative support to all departments in Town Hall. What we don't have in the budget uh, is a town planner We'll hopefully have more resources to dedicate to this in the future. The planning board has expressed a need for this role, especially as some of the members seek to retire from their roles. Full funding for a DPW general foreman is not there. Hoping to have more funding in the fall town meeting to be able to fund that position. And as we move forward, there will be a need to add services in coming years to the Board of Health and DPW, as well as other departments. The tax rate will be set once valuation occurs in the fall. However, it is currently $12.36 per thousand. We 
have a we'll have special town meeting in the fall because mainly the state budget is not set. Uh, the cherry sheet for the house had less money for charter school reimbursement than anticipated by the governor's budget, and that entire budget won't be released until the fall. We'll also have capital projects on that agenda, and in our current capital plan, items will include a new generator for the public safety complex, a girls' locker room renovation here at Hopkins Academy, as well as new new events for Hops, Hops, uh, excuse me, Hopkins and Academy HVAC, uh, police cruiser, new jump truck, and a Dyke Phase 3 certification. Moving into 2020, I've selected some strategic priorities for the select board, and it has been said numerous times from this board and those preceding it that Hadley is in for harder times because of capital needs in the town. Those main needs are updating aging infrastructure as well as updating aging facilities. I can't deny that these impending needs are there. However, I think Hadley also has numerous opportunities for growth. Just look at the amount of growth that is happening along Route 9. Even at a time when brick and mortar businesses are struggling, in Hadley we are seeing a lot of growth right now. My intention as chair is to ask the community's participation to envision where we can go from here. For that purpose, I have proposed forming the following committees, and with the caveat, these committees have not been formed yet. We still need to talk about it on the select board and approve it. But the first committee is establishing a committee to review our form of government and provide recommendations we can bring to our next annual town meeting in May of 2020. I'd like to establish a committee to address the impact of climate change on the town of Hadley. This could include establishing metrics to track the town's power consumption, looking at emergency preparedness and disaster protection, as well as recommending climate-specific policies to the select board. Establishing a civility and inclusion committee that we as a town can ensure equal rights to all. The committee will work to identify staff and board trainings, as well as identify ways to make the town more diverse and inclusive. I'm hoping this effort will include our new HR director. Um, establish an economic development committee to look at possible opportunities to change development pathways in Hadley and provide zoning recommendations and select board policies to do so. Lastly, I would like to create a plan to update the town bylaws, which could possibly tie in with the senior tax work-off program we currently are, have. Um, if you'd like to join any of these, not yet formed committees, but I'm express an interest in joining them. You can sign up in the back. There are some sign-up sheets for any of those committees as well as the standing committees. Um, or you can contact myself or Jennifer at the town hall. I think we are living in an exciting time and can make a positive impact on the community's future. Dwelling on the past and past decisions is not a path forward. The people that participate in town committees and boards will determine Hadley's path to move forward into the future. So I look forward to your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Could I have a voter count, please? 208. 208, thank you. And I was supposed to make an announcement earlier that I forgot, so before I get in trouble on my first day on the job, uh, the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging are having a really big raffle, and tickets are $25. Jane Nevin Smith is selling them. If you don't catch her tonight, you can get her at the Senior Center. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving right on. Right now I want to go over the rules of decorum in anticipation that the meeting will run smoothly. First and foremost, this is a democratic meeting. Everyone is entitled to speak and should feel free to do so without fear of retribution. Everyone has an opinion and that needs to be respected. If you don't understand what is being discussed, please ask for clarification. I want everyone to understand what they're voting on. The meeting will be conducted according to town meeting time rules. This very intriguing book. <laughs> if you wish to speak to an article, please come to one of the microphones up front. And I'm told there's one roaming on the, my left over there. I don't see it, but I will take word for it that it was there. 
Please state your name and address each time you have been recognized to speak. Keep all comments relative to the article or motion at hand. Do not disrespect any person in any way, shape, or form. Do not refer to any previous speaker by name. Please use previous speaker instead. You may speak as many times as you feel is necessary, but please give others a chance to speak before returning to the microphone. If necessary, I will ask you to wait until others have had a chance to speak. Direct your comments to the moderator. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Please remain seated during voting so that the votes can be counted quickly and accurately. All amendments must be submitted in writing to the moderator as soon as the amendment is offered. And finally, please silence all your electronic devices. I've heard quite a few go off already tonight. Okay, that being said, we're going to get right into the articles. First item on the warrant is the consent agenda. This is, tonight it's five articles that the Select Board, Moderator, and Finance Committee have identified for town meeting consideration. Those articles that they believe should generate no controversy and can be properly voted without debate. They will be voted all as one item. So, the motion is moved that the town take articles 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 out of order and that they be passed by consent in accordance with the motions shown on the consent agenda distributed this evening. And further allow all officers, department heads, and agents of the town to address the town meeting on matters as may be informational. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Matusko. <laughs> Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockton Street. Can we have a brief explanation of what we're voting on? That's all. A few words. Yeah. David Nixon will give that, please. Good evening. I'll run through the articles one by one and I'll also circle back to talk about why we're not working on number four tonight. Article one is a standard article that allows the town to accept and expend gift and grant money. That way we don't have to call a town meeting every time we get a $500 grant from some agency or, or enterprise. Article 2 is uh, required by the state for us to expend so-called Chapter 90 funds. Those are funds used for your roads and your bridges. We receive annually $316,000 for each year to keep the roads in good shape. And this vote is required to fill out the paperwork to get the reimbursement from the state. Article 3 is, allows the treasurer to do short-term borrowing in anticipation of future revenues within the fiscal year if we ever have a cash flow shortage. This has not happened, but it's a useful financial tool in times of need. Article 5 is a uh, set aside of money from the water reserves in the amount of $26,000 to pay uh, one year's installment on the water, water filtration process at the uh, water plant. That uh, filtration process costs $260,000 to replace. It has a use life of 10 years, so we put $26,000 aside every year in order to build up to that uh, replacement cost. With this vote, we'll have a balance of $78,000 in the kitty for that project. And the final one is required by state law having to do with your Community Preservation Act. We have to set aside a certain amount of money for the three categories of use identified in the, uh, the motion, as well as to establish a administrative fund for the CPA committee to conduct their work. They're asking for $2,000 for that administrative money that will pay for postage and envelopes and copying and legal fees and so forth. Those are the five articles that are on the consent agenda. Why is article four not there? Uh, we usually have a, what we call a cleanup article in every town meeting warrant where we have projects that are complete, we have surplus money left over, and we usually try to return that to um, the pot that it came from. Late in the uh, budgetary process, we thought about this in a different way, and we realized 
that this money is an opportunity. We'll bring this back in the fall town meeting in a way that will save you a little bit of money by paying down the principal debt and saving you uh, interest rate and interest costs later on. So we'll take this away tonight and we'll bring it back in the fall. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your green card. Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. We are off to a wonderful start. Just to, just to clarify, Article 4 is being passed over. Okay, we're going to go into Article 7. And the motion is, move that the town transfer from water reserves $1,468 to pay for prior year construction costs associated with the Route 9 water replacement project and further raise and appropriate $568 to pay a prior year payroll for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Nixon will speak to this. I need a motion, sorry. A second? Okay. We have two bills from prior years, so we need to bring this back to town meeting. The first one relates to the water replacement project on Route 9 from Wally Street to the town hall. A few years back, we had ETNL company dig up the entire width of uh, Route 9. We use that as an opportunity to get in there and replace water lines without having to pay for the overtop expenses of taking the, uh, the pavement on. Save the town many hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on this project. The project was funded through a grant uh, uh, through the state revolving fund. Once ETNL finished the project, they submitted all their paperwork to the state state approved it, um, we closed out the loan, everything is done, oops, discovered a bill that hadn't been uh, made. This is a bill that came from ETNL and the state uh, confirms that it's uh, due to us. So we're asking for your help in paying for this uh, late bill. Uh, the other one is from the Zoning Board of Appeals. They did not turn in their invoice for their service in, in a prior year, so we should uh, them their money. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah, Shell Harwood, 16 March Stone Lane. Um, this is more about future things like this. I think it might be better procedurally to separate out non-like items in case one of them turns out to be controversial and doesn't break down the other one with it. So for this year, let's do it that way, but maybe as we bring things forth in future years, that would be two R articles and not one. Okay. Point taken. Anybody else? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. okay, Article 8, motion is going to be read by Amy Fine from the Finance Committee. So we thought we might do things a little differently this time. Instead of going through each and every line item here that you're going to see, I was going to read the motion, I'll read the totals for you. And then if you have any questions, you can go from there. Motion is to move that $17,454,743 be appropriated as set forth in individual budget appropriations listed under the column FY20 finance recommended as described in Table A general fund budget in the handout entitled Finance Committee Budget FY2020 Annual Town Meeting 2019. 
as presented at annual town meeting and incorporated by reference here, herein and as funding therefore to transfer the local revenue funds raised via taxation and any other available funds to raise and appropriate and transfer from available funds uh, the, sum, the total sum of $17,454,743 as estimated in Table A1 of the Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Each um, item considered to be separate appropriation. Table A1, the, uh, FY 2020 revenue, raised and appropriate $17,026,667 Interfund Enterprise receipts $424,704. MSBA debt fund reserve $2,444. November 2014 premium balance $928. For total revenue of $17,400, I'm sorry, $17,454,000. $743 for total revenue. <coughs> and then with the total general fund operating budget, $17,454,743. So we have a balance budget. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Article 9, Valerie Wood from the Finance Committee will read. Thank you, Madam Chair. Unlike previous year, the Omnibus Budget is presented in two articles, General Fund and the Combined Free Enterprise Fund, to avoid the difficulties in setting the FY 2019 tax rate due to changes in Massachusetts Department of Revenue and Mathematical Equations related. Article 9, sewer, water, and handling the other aircraft. Okay. Moved that the sum of $949,860 as set forth in the column FY20 finance recommended in the handout entitled Finance Committee Budget FY2020 Annual Meeting 2019 as presented at the annual town meeting and incorporated by reference herein, up to and including the line entitled Total Budget Appropriation to be appropriated to the FY 2020 Wastewater Division Enterprise Fund account, be expended for the respective purposes set forward, with each item being considered a separate appropriation. Wastewater salaries, $332,655. Wastewater expenses, $476,650. Wastewater debt, $130,555. Wastewater reserve, $10,000. Total budget appropriation, $949,860. And further, moved that the sum of $1,088,153 as set forth in the column FY20 Finance Recommended in the handout entitled Finance Committee Budget FY2020 Annual Town Meeting 2019, as presented at Annual Town Meeting and incorporated by reference herein, up to and including line entitled Total <coughs> Budget Appropriation, to be appropriated to the FY2020 Water Division Enterprise Fund account to be expended for the respective purposes set forth with each item being considered a separate appropriation. Water salaries, $379,440. Water expenses, 
$510,369. Water's debt, $188,344. Water reserve, $10,000. For a total budget appropriation of $1,088,153. And further moved that the sum of $68,822 as set forth in the FY20 finance recommended in the handout entitled Finance Committee Budget FY 2020 Annual Town Meeting 2019. As presented at town annual town meeting and incorporated by reference herein, up to and including line entitled Total Budget Appropriation, be appropriated to the FY 2020 Hadley Media Enterprise Fund account to be expended for the respective purposes set forth with each item being considered a separate appropriation. Hadley Media salaries, $17,767. Hadley Media expenses, $4,230. Hadley Media reserve, did I screw that up? <laughs> Okay. Um, Hadley Media Expenses, $46,230. Hadley Media Reserve, $4,825. Total Budget Appropriation, $68,822. Do I have a motion? And a second? A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. And Andy Morris, Rubin, 45 Roosevelt Street. I see that the reserves have gone from $20,000 in uh, FY19 to four thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars Could you tell us uh, why there's such a big drop and what difference that will make? Who wants to, who wants to speak to that? This is uh, the reduction of the reserve for the Enterprise Fund for Hadley Media was uh, recommended by the Hadley Media Advisory Committee. Uh, so they didn't think that the cushion that they previously had of $20,000 was necessary given the smaller size of their budget. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next up is Article 10. And there, this is a capital expense article. There are eight motions involved in this article. We're gonna deal with each motion one at a time. So, the first one is Motion 10A, move that the town transfer $40,000 from water reserves for cleaning Callahan Well Number 2 for the Department of Public Works, $40,000 from sewer impact fees for a septage truck for the Department of Public Works, and $2,000 from water reserves, $2,000 from sewer reserves, and $2,000 from raise and appropriate for information technology for the Department of Public Works. Mr. Stanley will speak to this. Oh, I'm sorry. Need a motion, please? And a second. Thank you. So all of these capital requests would be coming out of the reserve funds. Um, the first one, the well cleaning, completes the cleaning of the Callahan well. Town's main water source. This project was started last year with well number one, and it concludes this year with well number two. Funds come from water reserves and there is no impact on water rates or taxes. Water reserves are currently $1,112,447. Uh, the second item for the, the septage truck, basically the last year we voted for $100,000 to purchase a used truck, but when we at, actually went out to bid that, um, the truck we were offered didn't suit our needs. So this article would raise additional funds to purchase a new truck. These funds come from the sewer impact fund and there's no impact on sewer rates or taxes for this purchase. 
The sewer impact fee fund is currently $256,527.66. And the last item is for um, DPW IT. Um, they need new computers with a standard operating system, Windows 10. Uh, I forget what Windows they're running now, but it's, it's quite old. Uh, this cost will be split three ways, sewer reserves, water reserves, and raise an appropriate. Sewer reserves are currently $129,117. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Motion 10B, capital asset schedule within levy borrowing. Move that the town appropriate $6,550 to pay costs of a capital asset schedule for the select board, including the pay payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 71 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley will speak to this as well. Uh, this, this article and the next three, I believe, are all borrowing within the levy. So there is no impact on taxes for these borrowing. We basically have a set amount in our budget to borrow every year, and this would be within that amount. Uh, this project itself would provide a better accounting of the town's capital ass assets, use life, and replacement values. Uh, things like air packs, um, trying to think of all the items, ex extinguishers, bulletproof vests, all these things. And this schedule really helps us account for everything, work on capital planning, and also can help just impact our credit rating and all those kind of things. Thank you, any discussion? Dan Ditkevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. Uh, my question to the select board is, uh, why are you going out to borrow this? You have 1.9 million in stabilization. 1.9 million. I remember for years we were trying to get 1 million, but now we have 1.9. My second question is, we used to use uh, the meals tax money for capital stuff, and I don't see any anything. Uh, I know it comes in the second part of the year, but why aren't you waiting for the second, uh, our other town meeting to do this? Thank you. So yes, capital is typically done in the fall. Um, this is a need that I was identified to do sooner rather than later. Um, so we, we decided we could borrow within the levy to purchase these items, and that was the decision matrix instead of pulling out a capital stabilization. Um, and, and that's why we did it, just that was the choice. What about the meals tax? Oh, meals tax, yeah, that, that, that is, considered free cash, so that will be accounted for for the special meeting in the fall, and uh, we, would, we would do more capital purchases then. Any further discussion? As this is a borrowing article, it requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Yeah, I've got one, one against, so 207 to one. Okay. Article 10C, 
Move that the town appropriate $7,000 to pay costs of vote, voting booths for the town clerk, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7-1 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of, of the town, therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. All right, this article again is borrowing within the levy, no impact on taxes, towns, uh, voting booths, as we all, uh, what we use at the time of voting, it's not the voting machine, but it's the booths you're actually filling in the circles at. Um, those are all falling apart and are stand ma state mandated to have. Um, basically, they just get beat up over time because they have to disassemble them and stack them and move them around. Uh, with this money, the clerk may buy five booths and we were hoping in the future to set up a plan where we could maybe buy one every year and kind of slowly replace them and keep them updated. So, but right now we need five. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Passes 207 to one. Motion 10D, move that the town appropriate $10,500 to pay costs of furniture for the select board, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7-1 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. Okay, this is the last article for funding with uh, borrowing within the levy. And this isn't necessarily furniture for the select board, it's furniture for town hall. Um, because of demolition of the hooker school and moving out of there, had to put a lot more people into town hall. And a lot of that furniture is very large from days gone by. And what we wanna do is kind of make things a little more compact, a little more efficient. And so this would be new furniture to squeeze everybody into town hall and, and have good spaces for them to work. That's the primary um, need for this, as well as a new table in the actual meeting room 203 in the town hall where uh, the select board, the planning board, and a lot of other boards and committees meet throughout the week um, to govern the town. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes 206 to 2. Okay, the next four motions are subject to Proposition 2.5 override. So if you we're going to vote on it this evening, and then it will be subject to another vote, another ballot vote. So keep that in mind when you're voting. And where are we? 10E. All right, okay. Motion 10E. 
Move that the town appropriate $75,000 to pay costs of acquiring a skid steer for the use of the highway division of the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, if, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7.1 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, provided, however, that the, that the vote taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? A second? Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley? Okay, this article and the next three, so four articles, are for uh, debt exclusion. And these items have been requested by the DPW, uh, skid steer, mini excavator, I'll leave the hot box out, and the uh, ditches, which are all coming up, basically to work on repairing and cleaning out some of the ditches in town. This skid steer is a lighter piece of equipment than a lot of the excavator or uh, backhoes and excavators the DPW has. So this would allow us to get into slightly more sensitive areas and, and clean up. Um, this is by debt exclusion. So if this was approved tonight, there would be a vote in early June at the ballot to then um, approve the borrowing of the equipment. So the vote tonight is to then go to that election. Uh, so the impact on taxes for the average single house is $5.62 a year for five years. The percentage increase on an average single family tax bill is 0.14%. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this article that the Capital Planning Committee recommends 4 0 to 0 except for the DPW ditches, skid steer, hot box, and mini excavator, which is recommended 3 1 0. The Finance Committee recommends all but the ditch cleaning, skid steer, hot box unit, and mini excavator, 400. Select Board recommends everything, 500. Yes. Yeah, and I just wanted to address real quickly that we put these items, capital is normally done in the fall. We put these items on this now because we wanted to um, have an opportunity to clean the ditches in the summer and fall, where if we waited to the fall to get this, we couldn't do anything until next year. So that's why these are on right now and on for debt exclusion. Thank you. Any discussion? Mr. Sykowski. Uh, Wally Sykowski, 135 Mount Warner Road. I'd like to speak in favor of the ditch cleaning. The ditches and Hadley are getting pretty well blocked up. Our soils and forests act as a sponge to soak up the extra water. Speak it to the microphone, please, sir. Our, our soils act as a sponge to soak up the water. If we don't take off the ex excess water, next time we get a heavy rain or rapid snow melt, there's no place for the water to go. We get a heavy runoff. We have washouts and flooded fields and woods. So I think we should spend the money to clean the ditches. Thank you. Jonah Brueger, 21 Norwater Drive. Did the Finance Committee make a recommendation on these? They did, and not, not, not a, they, they made a rec recommendation. Oh, hang on, I don't, I won't, don't wanna misspeak. <coughs> the Finance Committee recommends all but the ditch cleaning, skid steer, hot box unit, and mini excavator. So did they vote on 
these particular articles that we're voting on right now? Because it sounds like there's no recommendation. They voted. They did. They did not vote in favor of this particular article. We're talking a motion. We're talking about right now. Can the finance committee explain how they feel about this? I believe they can. So regarding all these items that are debt excluded, these are big ticket items. We would like to see them go towards the fall. <coughs> During the fall, we can look at um, if there's free cash, we can relook and possibly not borrow. If, we, if any of these items that are debt excluded goes to ballot, it's gonna cost the town at least another 3,500 to hold another election. So it's just gonna cost us more money. So we just felt like, not that they're not important, that these are very important items. We just want, we thought it would be better suited if we can do it with the rest of the capital in the fall. Was that a unanimous decision of the Finance Committee? Yes. Thank you. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. Right now we're just voting on the skid steer, correct? Correct. Thank you. All right, I was gonna speak about the ditch. Please state your name and David, address, please. David Phil, 211 Middle Street. Thank you. The ditches I brought up to the highway department that, this past fall and to the select board, um, if we wait until fall, people's properties are getting flooded. We have standing water from Route 9 to Bay Road, Middle Street, across E Street, in both of these ditches. Um, along with that standing water, we have mosquito issues, which last year we voted to do a study on mosquitoes. We get rid of the water, we probably get rid of a lot of mosquitoes. So I do not think that it'd be a smart thing for us to be waiting another year to clean these ditches. These ditches should have been maintained throughout the years. Um, we probably shouldn't be spending $100,000 at once. It should be a yearly maintenance budget, but we're beyond that now. So now we have to play catch up. So I encourage everybody to pass the $100,000 for the ditches so we can move on, get rid of the standing water and let these heavy rains go down where, okay. where they should. Just to be clear, we are not voting on $100,000 for ditches right now. We're voting $75,000 for a skid steer. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, it passes 193 to 15. Okay, motion 10F. Move that the town appropriate $30,000 to pay costs of acquiring a hot box unit for the use of the highway division of the Department of Public Works including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7, 1 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, provided however, that the vote taken here under shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2.5, so called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second? Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. Okay, we need to press pause on the uh, ditch talk. This is a shift. Um, this, this is a hot box to keep asphalt road based 
repair materials at the right temperature for road repairs year round. So what this means is we can actually put asphalt down to fix potholes and that kind of thing instead of cold patch, which tends to not last that long. Uh, this borrowing is again by debt exclusion, so this would be included in that ballot vote. Um, impact on taxes for the average single family house is $2.24 per year for five years. The percentage increase on an average single family tax bill is 0.055%. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, one, motion passes 196 to 12. Motion 10G. Move that the town appropriate $60,000 to pay costs of acquiring a mini excavator for the use of the highway division of the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7, 1 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, provided, however, that the vote taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. Okay, this is back on the ditches. The DPW requests a new mini excavator for jobs in tight places. Borrowing is by debt exclusion, so the impact on taxes for the average single family house is $4.38 a year for five years. That percentage increase on an average family tax bill is 0.11%. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes 193 to 15. Motion 10H. This is the cleaning and repair of ditches. Move that the town appropriate $100,000 to pay costs of cleaning and repairing ditches by the Highway Division of the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7, 1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, provided, however, that the, that the vote taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. Okay, last capital article here. Uh, town's ditches and culverts need major work and this article provides funds to begin a multi-year project to reduce flooding and to improve drainage throughout the town. 
it's my understanding this is mainly for contractual services. Um, borrowing is by debt exclusion, so the impact on taxes for the average single family house is 422 a year for 10 years. The percent increase on an average single family tax bill is 0.1%. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Just a couple quick questions. Name and address, oh, please. Uh, name is David Dudek, 11 Lady Slipper Lane. First, where are these ditches in you know in the, in the town? In about you know, are we talking about miles of ditches? You know, half a mile of ditches, three miles of ditches. Um, and then the second question is, we just approved equipment. I thought to work on the ditches. And now this is an additional hundred thousand dollars to also work on the ditches. Those are my two questions. Thank you. I'm just going to ask our DPW director, Chris Okafor, maybe to just explain it a little better, if he could. Thank you. Good evening. Um, First of all, we, um, the equipment that was... Excuse me, can you tell us who you my, are, please? My name is Chris Okafor, DPW Director. Uh, the equipment that we just approved, those are equipment that uh, will be used by DPW employees to be able to continue the process of cleaning the dishes. The 100,000 we are requesting includes uh, materials and also contractual labels. Um, um, most of the dishes, uh, we don't have the big equipment. We need contractors to help us. Uh, when we talk about ditches, uh, is, uh, we're talking about the drainage network uh, in Hadley. In Hadley, um, the whole drainage network goes uh, through, we call them ditches, but they are also drainage network. They go, and also they go through the roads. Many of them, uh, the culverts or big pipes are clogged. Um, because of years of um, non-maintenance, and so some of those coverts need to be replaced, or at, 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 at best cleaned out, um, what we call a, in construction, uh, putting a different sleeve or tube, if we can't open the road, either because in order to take out the old pipes requires maybe shutting down the roads, and road repairs, then we can also put pipe. These are materials, and they're expensive, and we need contractors to do that. So the 100,000 actually is a, a down payment for a multi-year program. The other good thing about this issue of what we are requesting that you should do, if you look at our roads today, because the waters have nowhere to go, they impact the roads. So they are standing water on the roads. And I'm sure many homeowners also have the same problem. But if we are able to begin the process of opening up the drainage and the culverts, the water will begin to move as it's designed to move, thereby uh, giving us a less problem. So that's what the, that's what the 100,000 is for. Thank you. Mr. Phil. So as the uh, DPW liaison, just wanted to say a couple things about this. Uh, the question about is it miles of ditches? It is miles of ditches. The network is throughout the town of Hadley, uh, everywhere from North Hadley down to by the highway and DPW department. Um, really the, the drainage system hasn't been maintained in decades uh, to the extent that it should have been. And what we're finding is that uh, many of the farm fields, even on uh, East Street, North Hadley, et cetera, are flooded where farmers can't get in there and plow their fields and plant their crops because the water's backing up from these drainage ditches. Um, some of the comments that we've had from residents are that, you know, they'll look in a particular drainage ditch and it's dry. Well, the reason is because a half mile up the road, it's so clogged up with sediment and trees and whatever else that nothing's flowing through there. And so all of our ditches run through uh, to the river, basically, or to, uh, North Hadley Pond. Um, and so that water has to go somewhere. And the problem that we have is, is you know, we need to get a start on this. The $100,000 isn't gonna come even close to solving the problem. And this is gonna take many years uh, to get under control, but this is a down payment on that. 
Thank you. Yes, sir. Mike Serzinski, 10 Laurel Drive. Hi, everybody. Uh, I assume these ditches go through private property. Under what authority are you going to be able to go on private property to dredge ditches? Who wants to tackle that one? So I, I would say the vast majority, I, could, I won't say all of them, just to be safe, but ha we, the town has easements uh, for these drainage d ditches um, across private property. And um, so that's how we would access the property. Mr. Matusko. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. A ditch is a living entity. You have to maintain them. They don't fix themselves. They, I'm pleased to hear that the town is finally doing something about this multitude of ditches in the, all over town. It's an important item that has been wo woefully neglected for a long time. And it's good that the town is addressing the issue, and I urge everyone to vote in favor of this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Keith Shannon, 20 Woodlawn Road. Um, has there been, or will there be, any exploration into state or federal funds for green infrastructure to help with the um, culvert replacement, dit, uh, ditch cleaning, things like that? Mr. Nixon. There are some state grant, grant uh, grants available for culvert and small bridge replacement. We have an application in right now. Uh, the money tends to be short, uh, so the grants are going to be there to supplement, but it won't replace the town's obligation to put up money in order to maintain the ditches. Thank you. Mr. Thayer? Rick Thayer, 179 Hockenham Road. Has anybody been brave enough to put a number to the total cost of this? I know this 100000 is a down payment, but is there any sense of where it's, where it's going to be told? My name is Chris Oka for DPW Director. Um, we have not put a final number to the total amount that you take is we, we are looking at three to five year program and uh, it's gonna be in the millions. We don't want to come before the select board or before the town meeting with a wrong number. So we're working on putting a good package before the select board. Thank you. Mr. McGee. One question that I have. Name and address, please. Okay. Come closer to the microphone. Tom McGee, 43 Old Mountain Road. The question I have is it would appear that this money being spent for the Department of Public Works would indicate that the Department of Public Works isn't being funded accurately or properly if we have to go to Proposition 2 and a half to pay for the needs that the Department of Public Works needs to carry out their function and maintaining the infrastructure that they're tasked with taking care of. I noted that in the book that I received, the tax rate was 1157 in fiscal year 216, then it went to 1256, and now by voting on all of these things for the Department of Public Works, you're increasing the tax rate in the town of Haddon. Thank you. Yes. Tony Lynn Morelli, 127 Rocky Hill Road. Um, I heard culvert replacement, so I just wanted to put in a plug as we get wetter and wetter weather and bigger and bigger storms that we think to the future as well as we're thinking about our culvert replacement and not just replacing it in kind. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed?
Thank you. Motion passes 200 to 8. Okay, moving on to Article 11. And this article was recommended by the Finance Committee 400, by the Select Board 500. Move that the town amend Chapter 86, Section 86-9, relating to tax liens revolving funds as, as administered by the Treasurer by increasing the annual expenses allowed from $5,000 to $7,500 and increasing the maximum allowable balance as of June 30th from $10,000 to $12,000. Molly Keegan will speak to this. Oh, sorry. No. Motion, please. Second. Thank you. Uh, so the treasurer's revolving fund was set up about a year ago with the standard limitations of $5,000 in annual expenditures and a $10,000 cap in the fund, meaning that any excess over $10,000 at the end of the fiscal year would be turned over to the town. The purpose of the revolving fund um, is to cover legal, legal expenses associated with tax title collections. Those expenses are added to the taxpayer's debt and are fully recouped by the town when the tax title is redeemed. In FY19, tax title collections were unusually high, and this resulted in over $14,000 in legal expenses being returned to the town. In the same year, new legal expenses have been relatively low at $3,000. FY2020 legal expenses are expected to be higher. So the request is number one, to raise the amount of recouped legal expenses that can be kept in the revolving account from ten dollars to $12,000 and to increase the amount that can be spent in a single year from five to seven and a half thousand dollars for the time when it becomes necessary to initiate any sort of legal action. So this is not part of the treasurer's budget and no additional funding is being requested from the town. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 12, Finance Committee recommends 400, Select Board recommends 500. Moved that the town accept the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 200A, Section 9A, relating to the disposition of unclaimed property. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Joyce Chungle will speak to this. This is a housekeeping article um, to allow the town to dispose of unclaimed property, and most of the is in the form of uncashed checks. Uh, in 2018, we had a total of 55 uncashed checks amounting to $3,600. So rebates, things like that, that people did not cash their checks. So we put that money back into the general fund. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Oh, we got one? I'm sorry. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Article 13, Finance Committee recommends 400. Select Board recommends 500. Move that the town raise and appropriate $19,000 to add to the police detail revolving fund established under Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53C. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Joyce Chungle will speak to this as well. Please, private duties details are paid out of a special revolving fund into which outside vendors and contractors pay for projects that require police presence. The fund is regularly depleted, eventually to be replenished, and police officers sometimes have to wait for their pay, six to eight weeks sometimes. So we want to 
increase this amount of money um, so that they can get paid in a timely fashion. Um, this fund will be used extensively for the Mass DOT Bay Road Bridge Replacement Project and the Mass DOT Route 9 Widening Project, which will be taking place in the next year or two. Uh, the fund currently has a balance of 21000 but that really depletes quite quickly. So there's no increase, so people, it's not going to be any taxes or money added to it. It's already money that we have. Thank you. Mr. Horowitz. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. Uh, was the select woman talking about the bridge that was recently already replaced on Bay Road? Are they doing that one again? How many years are we going to be stuck with this one this time? <laughs> Mass DOT is going to replace that bridge in its entirety starting in summer 2021. Uh, 20, uh, and they are telling me that it's going to take two years to happen. Um, <laughs> They are also going to be widening Route 9 from Town Hall to the malls. So we're trying to coordinate this in such We're trying to coordinate with Mass DOT to make sure that those two projects don't happen at the same time. But as you can see, we have some, some major work that's coming up in our future. We need this revolving fund to be robust enough to be able to preserve public safety by hiring police details. Yes, sir. Uh, David Dudek, 11 Lady Slipper Lane. This not, if vendors are paying, I'm not sure if vendors are paying the policemen, why are, why are we in the middle of this? Why is the taxpayer in the middle of this? It's a cash flow. We want to make sure that our police officers are paid. And we do get a percentage of administrative costs does come back from the town from the vendors also. Right, so we're we actually making money on it. <laughs> but how long do we have to wait for the vendors to pay? I mean, aren't the vendors paying? Well, we try to get them to pay in a timely fashion, but this is just to make sure that our officers are being paid in a timely fashion for doing their job. Don't you think? I think it's better if the vendors are actually paying. Well, we out. are. I mean, but, you know, you can only stronghold a vendor for so long. No, in, in, can we try to, try to get the money from DOT or the electric company or Verizon or... Charter or any of the other ones that we have. We're just trying to make sure that there's a continuation of cash flow so that everybody gets paid timely. Nobody gets, you know, it's nice. You like to get paid, don't you? Well, understand, yeah. right? Walmart sells their items before they actually sell them. Yes. Why, can't, why can't we, meaning the town or the police department, whoever bill, I'm assuming a bill goes out to the vendor, collect Because the money. we're not exactly sure the exact time frame that they're going to be there. So you can't bill them for something that already hasn't happened. You can get a deposit though. Right. Mr. Phil. The uh, select board just approved a late fee, a 15% late fee for these vendors after 45 days uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, this is basically acting as a, uh, the town handles the payments to our police officers for these private duty details. So um, this is basically acting as a credit card for the town for, for short term uh, funds. And we do, as Joyce mentioned, make a 10% administrative fee from these vendors. So uh, we do make a little bit of money off them, but it's, the, the issue is officers having to wait two months to get paid for the work they're doing. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Article 14, Community Preservation Act Committee Article, move that the town appropriate $210,000 from the Community Preservation General Fund for the purpose of acquiring an Agricultural Preservation Restriction, APR, 
on all or a portion of the parcel of property known as the Shala Farm, Assessor's Map 12D, Parcel 8, Assessor's Map 13, Parcel 49, and to authorize the select board to enter into such agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary for the town to be a co-holder of said APR. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA general fund. Community Preservation Committee recommends 801. Finance Committee recommends 400. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? second? Motion and a second. Somebody from the CPC want to speak to this? Paulette Kuzdeba, 40 Knightley Road. I'm actually speaking as the chair of the Conservation Commission. This was an application that was put forth. Um, agricultural preservation has been one of the items that has been key in this community. We are the leader in the state. This is um, preserving 170 acres of farmland off of Cummins and Shattuck Road and it's in partnership with the Kestrel Land Trust and Mass Department of Agriculture. When we put a property in APR, we are buying the development rights, and therefore this property will be permanently preserved. The only way it could be removed from this preservation would be a town vote and an act of legislature. This is a piece of property that the town has been looking at and trying to acquire for years. Um, we are actually doing somewhat a higher percentage now because this is an important property. It has wildlife habitat, it has rare species, it has 95 acres of statewide or prime agricultural soils. So this, we feel that this is an important property that needs to be preserved. Thank you. Just so everybody knows, this article in conjunction with the next article, Article 15, are going to be, the, the monies are combined together to allow this uh, process to happen. So, just so everybody understands that this is not the be all end all. If this is, the whole process is to happen. We have to vote on the next one as well. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Article 15. Finance Committee recommends 400. Select Board recommends 500. Moved that the town transfer $56,590 from transfer of development rights and transfer $93,410 from Conservation Land Fund for the purpose of acquiring an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on all or a portion of the parcel of property known as the Shala Farm. Assessor's Map 12D, Parcel 8. Assessor's Map 13, Parcel 49. And to authorize the select board to enter into such agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary for the town to be a co-holder of said APR. Do I have a motion? Second? Motion and a second. Anybody want to speak to this? Paulette Kuzdeba, 40 Knightley Road, Chair of the Conservation Commission. Again, this is an important piece of property. Um, the state is paying $360,000, which is 50% of this. The town share is approximately 360000 We asked for the money from CPA, and then the remainder comes from transfer of development rights and our conservation land fund. These are, as I said, these are funds that are available for this particular purpose, and we feel that this is an important property. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. 
Okay, Articles 16 and 17 are a similar situation on a different piece of land. Article 16 is recommended by the CPC 900 and by the Finance Committee 400. Moved that the town appropriate $83,091 from the CPA general fund for the purpose of acquiring an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on all or a portion of the parcel of the property known as the, the Nabala Farm, Assessor's Map 4F, Parcel 15, and to authorize the select board to enter into such agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary for the town to be a co-holder of said APR. Conditions include, the applicant would have two years to spend the funding, and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA general fund. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Motion and a second. Paulette, do you want to talk to this one? Hi, Paulette Consteba, 40 Knightley Road, Chair of the Conservation Commission. This purchase of another APR would restrict or preserve 38 acres of prime farmland off of East Street. Uh, this is a partnership with the Mass Department of Agriculture. Uh, the property is a large block of longtime family farm. It is active farmland, runs north to south from Route 9 to Bay Road. And the back border includes the Fort River, which is an important wildlife corridor rare um, species habitat for state um, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It's less than a half a mile from the Callahan Wells and is within the zone two of the Callahan Wells. The Conservation Commission is partnering with Mass Department of Agriculture on the project and we are also using transfer of development right funds for this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 17, Finance Committee recommends 400, Select Board recommends 500. Moved that the town transfer $20,773 from the transfer of development rights Fund for the purpose of acquiring an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on all or a portion of the parcel of the property known as the Nabala Farm, Assessor's Map 4F, Parcel 15, and to authorize the select board to enter into such agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary for the town to be a co-holder of said APR. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Paulette Kazdeba, 40 Knightley Road, Chair of the Conservation Commission. Again, this is the same property. Um, just so you know, the Department of Agriculture is paying 84.26%. Um, the town share is 15.74%. And we're using transfer of development right funding so that this will not impact the town or take any further reserves. Yes, sir. Andy Morris, 45 Roosevelt Street. I'm chair of the CPA committee. I just want to say with, with the purchase of these two APRs, that will put Hadley over 4,000 protected acres, the most in the state, and will achieve the goal that Alexandra Dawson set out for us many years ago. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 18 is recommended by the CPC 900 and the Finance Committee 400. Moved that the town transfer $500 to the Historical Commission to fund an inspection and preservation plan for two historic 1740-era maps of Hadley. Funding would come from the Historical Set-Aside Fund. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding, and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA Historical Set-Aside Fund. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Freeman. 
Thank you, Andy Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street in Hadley. Hadley has two incredible treasures of its past, the Goff Bible, which is in the uh, Historical Society, and these two deerskin maps, uh, 1750 maps of two portions of Hadley. Um, they were found in a safe. Uh, nobody knows where they came from, um, and we think that they need to be preserved, so we would like to take them to the Williamstown Art Museum and have an assessment done so future generations can see and view the maps and they can be preserved safely. Uh, after we get the plan, I will come back, or the Historical Commission will come back to ask for more money to implement the plan. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, motion passes. Article 19, recommended by the CPC 711, recommended by the Finance Committee 400, moved that the town transfer $32,000 to the Hadley Park and Recreation Department for work as proposed on application dated 1919 for finishing construction of Zaturka Park. Funding would come from the CPA General Fund. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding, and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA General Fund. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? second? Motion and a second. Anybody want to speak to this? Mr. Klopacki. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Andy Klopacki, Hadley Park and Recreation Commission. What's your uh, address, please? 60 Tremor Road. Thank you. Uh, so. Last, uh, last summer, while the um, project was underway, there were some um, drainage issues that were encountered, as well as some um, unforeseen obstacles under the ground. These things had to be removed, and um, Phil brought in and replaced. Um, at the time, uh, to complete that part of the project, the commission voted to uh, divert some money that had been set aside for uh, wrapping it up, including paving the uh, parking lot and uh, the trail on the, on the uh, parcel on the park. So um, this money is uh, intended to help complete the project, uh, to pave the parking lot and to pave that trail and to complete this phase of the Zaturka Park renovation. And it will, again, coming from CPA, um, it will have no impact on taxes and, we, and the uh, commission uh, appreciates the support the town has provided so far to this project. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 20, CPC recommends six two to one. Finance Committee has no recommendation. Moved that the town transfer $1,517 to the Friends of Lake Warner per the application as amended 11719 to construct a boardwalk on conservation land bordering Lake Warner. Funding would come from the CPA General Fund. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding, and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA General Fund. Do I have a motion? A second? second. Motion and a second. Would somebody like to speak to this? Yes, sir. Peter Mulady, 144 Mount Warner Road, representing the Friends of Lake Warner. I wrote this proposal. Um, any questions you have, I'm here to answer. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions? I could add that this is Perch Swamp, which is a unique environmental um, ecology, pretty much restricted to Hadley, Sunderland, and Amherst in the whole world. And there are two endangered species that are involved, and this is designed both to protect them and to protect the swamp. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes.
Article 21, another CPA article. CPC recommends 80 to 1. Finance Committee recommends 400. Move that the town transfer $810 to the Friends of Lake Warner per the application dated 12 29 18 for water testing of Lake Warner for conservation purposes. Funding would come from the CPA general fund. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA general fund. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Motion and a second, thank you. Yes, sir. Peter Milady, 144 Mount Warner Road, representing the Friends of Lake Warner. Uh, this is a bit of a problem. Uh, the lake, as most of you know, is the subject of all the rejects of Amherst and some 68 square miles of watershed, which is highly polluted. And we have a situation where we have E. coli contamination of the lake. <coughs> We like to notify the public when it's too dangerous to even vote on the lake, which happened to my count seven times last year. And um, quite frankly, this is a public health, public safety issue and should be cared for by the town. However, it came to my attention earlier this year that there was no provision for such this year. That's why we made this request. It's my understanding that we won't be able to request this money next year from the CPA. Their rules don't allow it. Something must be done by the town of Hadley at some point in the future to notify the public of public safety hazards in the water of Lake Warner. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 22 is another CPA article. Community Preservation Committee recommends 801. Finance Committee recommends 400. Moved that the town transfer $185,000 to the Hadley School Committee slash School Department for phase one of improvements of the Hopkins Academy playing fields per the proposal dated 12-18-2018. Funding would come from the CPA general fund. Conditions include the applicant would have two years to spend the funding and if not spent, any remaining funds would revert back to CPA general fund. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Anybody want to speak to this? Annie McKenzie, Superintendent of Schools. The CPA has previously set aside some money for the renovation of the Hopkins Academy athletic fields. This additional money and money from private donations. Private donations will make up roughly 25% of the anticipated expenditures for phase one, would put us in a position to start renovation, go out to bid this summer and start renovation as soon as a bid was awarded. The student athletes and students at, at Hopkins Academy would greatly appreciate support from the town for this. Part of the phase one renovations will include half of a community walking path being completed in phase two, the rest of the walking path would be completed. The fields will be available for town use at any time when the students aren't using them for <coughs> athletic events, and the walking path also would be available to the town. So on behalf of the students of Hopkins and student athletes, thank you for your support to date and for any additional support you can provide. Thank you. Any further discussion? Diane Stengel, 43 Breckenridge. I just have a general question. I know we have, I've heard rumors, I'm sure they're reasonably close to the accurate, that we have lots of money in the Community Preservation Fund in Hadley, and we can spend it, you know, we spent a lot of money today on community preservation, and I don't disagree with any of it. I'm not trying to raise any of them in an individual way. 
Is there someone that can provide us with some general information as to what is available in the funds right now, uh, or, or just other general information to give a perspective on all of this? Sure, I'm sh I know there's somebody here they can. Andy, please. Andy Morris, Ribbon 45 Roosevelt Street. Thank you for your question. Um, let's see. Um, we have $511,227 approved from the CPA fund, but not yet spent. The open space set aside is $510,623. Historic is $51,283. Housing is $153,959. So if you have some ideas about how to spend this housing money, please call me. <laughs> uh, the general fund is um, oh, 1.83 million. Available for spending is 2.03 million. State distributions this year were 115,775, over $25,000 in interest, and the town contribution was $2,661. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry, $266,140. The average statewide distribution was 19%, but have they received a 43.5% distribution from the state? Uh, we have seven applications tonight, totaling over $500,000, our most ever. Thank you for that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, motion passes. Article 23, select board recommends this 500. Move that the town authorize the Hadley Select Board to grant a non-exclusive utility easement to NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy over a portion of town-owned land identified as parcel 41-32 known as 46 Middle Street and to allow NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy to utilize the town's interest in the easement described in the easement relocation agreement recorded at book 13,130, page 102 in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds for purposes of a non-exclusive utility easement. Do I have a motion? Second? I have a motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. This easement will uh, uh, be the easement for utilities, I guess primarily electric, uh, to the senior center from Route 9. Um, this easement is on top of the easement we have with the Legion for that purpose, and we need to grant this to Eversource to allow the utilities to be um, run to the senior center. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 24, Select Board recommends 401. Move that the town transfer the Select Board Oh, yeah, sure. Move that the town authorize the select board to petition the general court to release land protected under Article 97 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Do I have a motion? A second? Motion and a second. Mr. Phil. So. Article 24, uh, actually, the select board has voted that if Article 24 does not pass, uh, we voted unanimously to remove Article 25 from the warrant uh, because they're somewhat linked. So uh, the background on this is in 2014, the, uh, at fall town meeting, uh, the town meeting voted to sell North Hadley Hall. 
and we've been in the process of trying to do that for, for many years. Uh, most recently, we hired a professional real estate firm to handle the sale of North Hadley Village Hall and the ball fields next to it, but due to a recent court case in uh, Westfield, um, it appears that the ball fields itself are under Article 97 for protection for recreational land. So what we're going to do is petition the state legislature to remove uh, that land from the protected status, and we're going to possibly, if this article passes in the following one, replace it with some land from Zaturka Park. Uh, the reason this is critical is the sale of North Hadley Village Hall is on hold until we can determine the status of this land and uh, get it released from a protective status uh, because without the land going along with the North Hadley Village Hall, the value of the property is significantly decreased. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Dwyer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bill DeWire, 388 River Drive in deep North Hadley, and I drive by this uh, twice a day. Uh, I, I submit the situation is a little more complicated. At the time the town voted to sell North Hadley Hall, the applicability of Article 97 to the playing fields was unknown. By way of background, Article 97 is an amendment to the Massachusetts Constitution that says recreational land is the common property of all of the citizens of the Commonwealth and is to be preserved and protected. Uh, the property in North Hadley, the ball field, it turns out more than just being affected by the Westfield case, Smith versus Westfield, which was decided by the Supreme Judicial Court last year, more than just being affected, the land was taken by eminent domain explicitly for the purposes of being a playground to the school that was then located in North Hadley Hall. So it's more than just a property that has been used as a playground. It was acquired by the town originally as a playground. I don't think we knew this when we voted. I know I didn't, and I'm a real estate lawyer. But I did some research. I found that, uh, that deed from the 20s, um, the explicit taking by eminent domain for playground purposes. And um, I think we're missing an opportunity here by just charging ahead and seeing this as a problem to be solved instead of an opportunity to be developed. Because we're not going to get a one acre lakefront parcel back once this is sold. Uh, I do want to jump ahead because uh, as was mentioned, this is connected to Zaturka Park. I would submit, and I'll defer to town council to a degree, but I have my own opinion on this, that under the holding of Smith versus Westfield, you don't have Zaturka Park as a, as a chip. It is already protected. So you can't take one piece out of protection and substitute for it another piece that is already protected. So I would suggest that uh, we put a hold on this uh, and use this as an opportunity to rethink some of the options. Now, I recognize that we have a realtor for the first time for North Hadley Hall, but um, you know, tearing it down is an option too. And then we would have an acre, you know, almost an acre and a half, acre and a quarter uh, of municipal land with lakefront. I know it's not accessible to the lake right now, but I'm sure it could be made accessible. And frankly, it seems like a much more appealing access point than the very crowded boat launch by the bridge at uh, uh, 20 feet upstream from the dam. Thank you. Andy? A Andy Morris, Ribbon, 45 Roosevelt Street. I'm just speaking now as a citizen. It's not a CPA issue. Um, it's been very difficult to sell this building. One thing has gone wrong after another. Did you ever get the feeling the universe is trying to send you a message? Um, the, uh, my, my second point is that um, uh, these two linked articles are sort of, in my mind, against the spirit of Article 97, 
which is to keep towns from reducing their amount of recreational <laughs> land. Right now we have seven acres, one of which is protected and six of which are not. If we vote in favor of these two articles, we will have six acres protected and one acre that's sold. So that's really one acre less, anyhow you look at it. Um, and then my final point is, some people feel that there is a town right of way between the church and North Hadley Hall, which would also be a stumbling block for the sale that also needs to be taken care of regardless of these two uh, warrant articles. And I just thought of another one. Um, if Article 24 fails, I would still like to vote on Article 25 because I think Zajerka Park deserves that protection. And if we do sell North Hadley Hall, we should buy another acre somewhere else, which is what the program is designed to do. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. Um, I'm Ginger Goldsbury, 245 River Drive. And I live almost next door to that. The only green, open green space left in North Hadley. There is nowhere else for children to play. And when I moved there, they were still playing Little League there, not very often. And there was a fence to keep them out of the street. Um, and that's sort of gone by the way. And um, what I've noticed in the last 10 years since I've lived there for 19 years is there are increasing numbers of children in the neighborhood. In fact, I just met another new one, a little, little one, um, recently. And there are just more and more of them, more young families. And they can actually walk to that park. And they can actually play there. And putting up a fence doesn't cost that much money. And yes, it could be hopefully someday in access to the, to, the river, to the pond, because there really isn't much of one now. And there was access to the pond in 1916 when we first had that property. There are pictures showing that. So I think it's, and as um, previous, one of the previous speakers said, if it's, once it's gone, it's gone, and it won't come back again. That property is used for parking during the annual ice fishing derby, which brings in hundreds of people, children and families and picnicking, and everyone parks there. If that is gone, so is the fishing derby, which has been going on for almost 15 years. So it's a valuable piece of property to keep as a park, as a recreational facility, and I agree that it should be put off. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Horowitz. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. I am planning to vote no on this. I grew up in an area where water access that was taken for granted two, 300 years ago had been severely compromised. I grew up in New York City. Okay, New York City is surrounded by rivers and other bodies of water. And there are really very few places where New Yorkers can actually get to the water. And I think having town control of, uh, I, I don't want to use the word beach, but you know, a, a, a waterfront access point is something very special and we should not fritter it away like, lightly. Thank you. Mr. Phil, did you want to speak? Mr. Waskevitz, go ahead. Uh, Dave Waskevitz, 126 Middle Street. I just want to remind everybody, not too long ago, we purchased 10 acres just up the street uh, that we had originally planned for recreation. Um, it's still available if the, the town feels it's necessary to preserve it uh, in a definite way. This would be one way to do it. Um, the land going down to the lake in that area, if you're going to make it for recreation, should be made accessible, but you're going to find it's rather steep and you're going to spend a lot of area just zigzagging back and forth just to get to the water. So I'm not seeing how this is a useful location. Uh, the, the building that we're trying to sell needs parking, and that's a zoning regulation uh, planning board um, that needs a lot of land to go with it in order to make that building useful. So. Um, that's one of the reasons we sort of have to let go of that land if we want to make use of that property for something other than the town property. Thank you. Mr. Phil. So just in response to a couple of the questions, uh, to the best of our knowledge and based on speaking with the realtor and attorneys, uh, there is no 
easement or town right of way to the, through that property. Granted, as it was owned by the town, we could use it to access the lake, but there is no deeded easement on that property to the lake. Uh, part of the reason that we've been steadfastly pursuing selling this property is repairing the building is going to be somewhere along the lines of $3 million. And uh, it, it just wasn't something that we wanted to invest in. And so since 2014, when the town meeting voted to sell the property, we've basically removed the entire maintenance budget other than just bare bones, um, you know, enough to keep the pipes from freezing. We have uh, fire equipment that's stored in the garages there. Uh, but other than that, we haven't maintained or done anything to keep the building up because the plan was to sell the property and it doesn't make sense to you know, put money in if you're gonna sell it. So uh, basically in the five or so years that the property has been sitting in this process, um, I'm sure that price tag has increased. I can let the Municipal Building Committee speak to that aspect of things, but. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jennifer Hall Witt, 134 West Street. Um, I'm, this is a legal question. Um, if when the town meeting voted to sell the um, North Hadley Town Hall, if it was not known that the land there was protected under Article 97, does that void the vote? Town Council, can you answer that? Uh, in my opinion, the, uh, the vote that was taken would still be valid, but in terms of what someone could do, it, do with it if they purchased it, um, this Article 97 issue would have to be sorted out first. But I, I would not say that the vote in 2014 was uh, invalid. Can you give me any legal reasoning for why that would be the case? The, the vote was simply to authorize the board, of, I assume not having it in front of me, authorize the, uh, the selectmen to see if they could uh, convey the property. Um, and so that authorization is still there. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm a lay person, I'm not a lawyer, but I would think that people might have voted differently if they had realized that that land was protected in that way. Um, I would think there would be lots of different reasoning that might go on in people's heads and I I guess I'm I I'm wondering if you're sure about that reasoning well I, I, I all I can tell you is that uh, in my opinion that vote to authorize the selectmen to seek whether this could be sold or not that authorization is still valid thank you Michelle Morris Friedman 45 Roosevelt Street um, I have a couple questions about the space. One is the fire bays, I could imagine, could be taken down and that would give you additional parking there. The other question is, would it be possible um, to sell the property and a small amount if needed for parking, but keep the majority of the park in Chapter 97A? I can't imagine filling that whole space as a parking lot with the number of units that could fit into North Hadley Village Hall. Thank you. Uh, who wants to answer that question? I have an answer, but I don't know. So we did uh, find a pers prospective buyer for the property. The town did try to reserve uh, parking for the, uh, for the buyer, but also preserve some of the open space for the town. Uh, that deal fell apart, so we did try that. It didn't didn't work out. So we're trying to go at this in an, another way. I'll just speak uh, from my uh, capital committee side as opposed to my personal side, because I think they probably differ, but um, taking on this, you know, basically if we vote down this Article 97 transfer, 
it really ties us to North Hadley Hall, I think. I don't think the property's sellable uh, without that land, just because of zoning bylaws and those kind of things. But that does put the town on the hook for doing something with that building, whether it's tearing it down, whether it's repairing it, all those things. That's a lot of capital that the town would have to come up with in addition to all the other capital items we have coming up. And um, if you're thinking about taxes and tax rates and all those kind of things, if we commit to, um, to, to not transferring the Article 97, we're committing to increasing taxes and doing more with this property. Mr. Dwyer. I don't think we've heard from uh, oh, okay. Slutwoman Chunglow yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll defer. Thank you. I've been trying not to get up here. Um, Back in 2014, I think I spearheaded the, uh, to sell North Hadley Hall because at that point in time, the town did not have over $2 million to put into that building. Um, and it wasn't going to do us any good to try to. We had painted it, um, the pigeons came back, uh, uh, we had uh, bad paint on there with lead in it. Uh, there was many things that had gone wrong there. And we were trying to build a sub-fire station up there because the, that one had become inadequate at that point. Um, the problem is, is that property is that the planning board does have a say in what that property is used for. And usually on most of the projects, they require green space also with their buildings of projects, whether it be housing or uh, whatever it might be deemed necessary. There's a lot of different things of what that property could be used for. Um, but again, it would have to go through planning and it might even have to go through the ZBA. So there's still a long process here and it's something that the town cannot afford. As you've seen tonight on the different projects that we've uh, asked you to support, um, just by doing drainage ditches, things that have been neglected um, over a number of years. and. We're trying to play catch up on a lot of the things that should be taken care of. And old buildings are not one of our things that we really want to uh, do at this time. So I would ask you to support this so that we can sell that piece of property. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. So Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. Uh, and I, I, I say this as a person whose father attended a middle school in the North Hadley Hall by horse-drawn bus uh, and um, based building off some of what was said here tonight yeah you're not maintaining it uh, that's not prime marketing for it let's face it, it we can't keep everything but that doesn't mean we have to sell everything that building can come down that's a worthwhile investment to get that open space in North Hadley Center thank you Yes. Ginger Goldsbury, 245 River Drive. I just would like to remind you, David, um, that when the last time we had a, an, uh, someone about to buy that building, there was a discussion about using some of that land for parking and the green space, and some would remain open for um, recreation. And we had that discussion with him. It might not have been the town, but certainly those of us in the Friends of Lake Warner were involved in that. And the reason it fell through had nothing to do with the parking. It had more to do with the building usage that didn't go through. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeKevitz. Dan DeKevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. Uh, I don't know, I think I might have been involved back in 2014, but Mr. Dwyer brings out an excellent point. We could perhaps knock that building down and that could be available for townspeople's use for 100 years. Kids going out to play have a boat access. Just like they said, there's where else can you get access on North Hadley Pond? And it's a beautiful spot. It's an absolutely beautiful spot that I wouldn't want to see a house up there or any kind of municipal building. And uh, I agree with Mr. Dwyer. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jim Harvey, 293 River Drive. Um, I'm wondering if anybody has got a rough idea of what it would cost to tear it down. I, I, 
I don't think we have that number, but just reviewing the contract that we did for sending this out to for sale, there are tremendous amounts of historical restrictions on that building if we were to sell it. So I don't know if anybody here from historical wants to speak up about tearing it down from the everything we've been uh, given so far, his, historical commission does not want to tear down that building. I don't know if anybody's here from there. Mr. Dwyer. Hi. Uh, I am not speak, uh, Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. I am not speaking for the Historical Commission. I can tell you that uh, the building is on the National Register of Historic Places. I can also tell you, having consulted a uh, historic preservation specialist, that demolition of a building on the National Register of Historic Places is allowed. Thank you. Any further discussion? No, we have no further discussion. We don't need to call the question. All right, all those in favor, signify by raising your cards. Thank you, all those opposed. Thank you, motion fails. Okay, so what do we, how do we get rid of it? Mr. Moderator, I have a point of order. Is sorry. it possible to Hold ask? Hold on, who, oh, I'm sorry. Recognize, tell me who you are, please. Tell us who you are. Andy Morris, Ribbon, 45 Roosevelt Street in Hadley. Is it possible to call for a vote on Article 25? I gotta get that clarified for you. Hang on, please. Select for a Okay, everybody, understood, but, okay. Select board wants to remove article 25 from the warrant. I cannot do that by just saying so. So we're gonna, I need to get a motion from them to, to remove the article in a second. No, it's not. It's, you guys can't do it. It's not the select board decision. We have to get it out here. Okay? So, um, how do we do this? Okay. Okay, so we have a motion to pass over Article 25 and a second. Any discussion? Excuse me, who are you? <laughs> Don't you have it committed to memory yet? Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. In support of the motion, I would say that uh, my, my reading of uh, uh, Smith versus Westfield, which uh, applied Article 95 by, Article 97 by usage, applies to Zaterka Park. I think it's a moot point. Zaterka Park is protected. It doesn't need to be protected. It doesn't need a vote of town meeting to protect it. It is. Thank you. Mr. Wiskevitz? Uh, I was the one vote to move this uh, article forward to let you people decide whether we wanted to put the preservation restrictions against the Turk Park. So that's why we're all here. <laughs> Okay, any further discussion? We are voting on passing over Article 25. All those in favor, signify by raising your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes. Article 25 is removed.
Okay, Article 26. Move that the town amend the bylaws of the Code of the Town of Hadley as delineated in Article 26 of the Annual Town Meeting Warrant for May 2nd, 2019 and incorporated by reference herein. Select Board recommends this for one to zero. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Motion and a second. Mr. Washkevitz. So the planning board and the chief of police have asked to strengthen an already existing general bylaw from prohibiting uh, the consumption of marijuana on public property. The change to the bylaws affect enforcement and penalties. This article Okay, yeah, this article is in companion with the next article, a zoning article regulating the adult use of marijuana. Uh, Chief, we had a couple questions. I don't know if you'd like to address them all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mike Mason, I'm the Chief of Police here. Um, just to clarify a couple of things, uh, the planning board did approach me several months back. Uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, when all of the new marijuana laws went into effect and were being changed and altered, they made a suggestion that uh, any town that had a bylaw regulating the use of marijuana in public places um, adjusted as you see here. Um, they asked that I review it for workability to see if it was appropriate to for us to enforce it because the police are the enforcing officers of it they also asked town council to review it to make sure that it was well within the guidelines set forth by uh, 935 cmr 500 which is what all the marijuana uh, laws uh, are based under as i see uh, the way that this is written what the pioneer valley planning commission has recommended and what the planning board has put together um, I've reviewed several other cities and towns that have the same bylaw and they are almost exactly the same as far as I'm concerned it is well within what is allowable. Uh, town Council I believe concurred. Uh, so this is what they are recommending to put forward. Uh, going along with that, this is an amendment to a bylaw. So just so everybody is aware, the town already had a bylaw of this nature in place. This is simply what, what was recommended to strengthen or adjust it. I'm not really sure what the language they used to do that was, but uh, this is what they're suggesting. Uh, I understand that there was a question, at least one question last time as it related to public housing, uh, apartment complexes and things like that as far as the use, uh, the enforcement of this bylaw. Um, simply put, if I understand the question correctly, uh, just because it's called public housing, uh, does not mean that it is public for the enforcement of this bylaw. That is not how this works. Your, your home is your castle. Um, if it is your residence uh, and it is the curtilage of your property, as we call it, meaning the property that is immediately adjacent to your residence, that is not public property, and the, the bylaw will not be able to be enforced in those areas. So I hope that answers the question. There is one caveat I'd like to add to that, um, just so no one goes back and tells the management of their properties that the police chief said it was okay to smoke marijuana in their <laughs> apartments. Um, apartment complexes, public housing, things like that, they are able to regulate whether or not uh, you can smoke within these buildings. Um, so please make sure that you check with the management of the property before you do so. I would encourage you to find alternative types of marijuana to use if they don't allow smoking. Uh, just don't drive when you're doing it. Yeah. Chief, uh, for for example, Greenleaf's Apartments has a lease agreement with all of their citizens, uh, just like Golden Court and Berkeley, Correct. and similar properties like that. Yeah, they, they, they could take 
civil action uh, against you. They could evict you if you, are, if you violate the lease, if that is one of the rules that they have. So I would, like I said, I would encourage you to check with them first. Um, but for the purposes of enforcing this bylaw, that is not, um, that is not what, we, what we intend on doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. David Dudek, 11, 11 Ways to Berlin. I'd just like to know, are the penalties, are the enforcement penalties the same for alcohol? I mean, the first part of this looks similar to the regulations for alcohol. You know, you can't have it in your car and open containers in the car and so on. Are the enforcement and penalties the same for alcohol as they are for marijuana, or, or are these more? Chief, can you answer that? And Chief of Police, um, a lot of the alcohol bylaws that we have really have more to do with age restrictions than anything else. Um, there's a, for example, there's a uh, MGL for open container of alcohol in a vehicle. It's a $500 civil fine. Uh, it's not a criminal penalty. So really, it depends on um, the area that you that you're using the substance, the age that you are, whether or not you're violating a bylaw, whether or not you're violating a, an MGL. Um, it's Massachusetts. We love to make laws here, so it's it's really it really depends on the situation. It's kind of a hard hard question to answer. Thank you, Mr. Matusko. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. A point of clarification: Does that mean I got to lock my glove compartment or unlock it? I I that's kind of vague in in the the first, second, third line up from the bottom on page nine. It's uh, shall not include a motor, motor vehicle's trunk, locked glove compartment, or living quarters of a house. Does that mean I got to start? Shall not include, correct. If it's locked, then it is not considered an open. Who locks the glove compartment? Who <laughs> carries marijuana on the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Article 27 is a zoning bylaw. This requires two thirds majority. All I have to do is find the motion. Okay, Our, um, Article 27, move that the town amend the zoning bylaws of the code of the town of Hadley as delineated in Article 27 of the annual town meeting warrant for May 2nd, 2019 and incorporated by reference herein. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? A motion and a second. Mr. Maximowski. Jim Maximowski, 12 Norwater Drive. The planning board unanimously recommends approval of this article. I'm going to explain it in a minute, but so we don't confuse you, Bill Dwyer is going to explain. Um, this is not your typical zoning article. Bill will explain. <laughs> Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive, and a member of the planning board. Actually, I'm clerk of the planning board, Jim's chairman. Um, normally in zoning, in a town like Hadley, our zoning bylaw is written such that if something is not allowed, it is prohibited without being explicitly listed. However, in Massachusetts, the general court has authorized the adult use of marijuana. It came to a statewide vote. The state supported it. The town of Hadley supported it. So therefore, uh, adult use marijuana, as with medical use marijuana to a degree, is sort of in a separate category. So the town has the option of not regulating it, regulating it, 
or prohibiting it. However, in order to prohibit adult use growth or sale in Massachusetts, you have to go through an explicit procedure. Voting down a bylaw is not that procedure. There would have to be a vote of town meeting to prohibit adult use. There'd have to be a ballot vote to prohibit adult use. That is off the table. No one is proposing that. The question before us today is whether we want to have local regulation of adult use marijuana or no local regulation of adult use marijuana. If we do not adopt this bylaw, the adult use, growth, cultivation, and sale of marijuana will be regulated by the Cannabis Control Commission's regulations together with what uh, site plan approval we might have. Uh, we would have very limited regulatory authority above and beyond what we have with regard to any other business. So this bylaw, which was developed in uh, consultation with probably the most actively engaged group of citizens that we've seen on any bylaw, um, is your option to impose reasonable regulations on the adult use of marijuana, uh, sale, cultivation, use in hand. Well, actually, sale and cultivation. The zoning bylaw has nothing to do with use. What you do with it once you buy it is up to you. Okay, very briefly, if more questions come up, we'll answer them. But briefly, this bylaw, like Bill says, has been, been worked on with. Uh, an ad hoc group of committee from, from the different parts of the town for probably the last eight or nine months. And it will regulate where it can be grown and where it can be sold. It'll be sold basically in the, in this, in the business areas like anything else. But growing agriculture, marijuana has been decide, decided to not be an agricultural commodity by the mass legislature. Therefore, um, there is some regulation that the town has where it can be grown. And right now, the way this bylaw is written, in the ag residential districts in town, it'll be grown inside of a greenhouse or a building that will not be exposing night light, so it's gonna be kind of a dark sky. It'll be either natural sunlight or lights, but it won't be a illuminated thing at night where it's going to be imposing on anybody. And that's side is limited to 5,000 square feet. There will be open grow like you grow tobacco or corn is not allowed under this bylaw. There's a lot of unknowns in growing marijuana. The biggest one is everybody says you read different articles in a newspaper on the internet and so on and so forth and they say it stinks like a skunk. And it's a horrendous stink and you go on and on and on. We don't know if that's really true or false. The idea being here with this bylaw, we're gonna start small, regulate it, see what the real story is, and probably come back to you in a year or so with an updated bylaw that's going to allow a bigger facility, open grow, or we're gonna find out what we have is just what we want. We don't know, and we're trying to, it's a lot easier to open it up down the road than to control it and shut it down down the road. That's why we're starting very conservative, and we're trying to see what, see what the real story is, because no matter who we talk to, you hear everything from, oh, it smells like roses, to it smells like a dirty skunk. Well, yeah, that's, a heck of a, that's an awful big range to deciding what we want to do. Thank you. Mr. DeKevitz. Dan yeah, DeKevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. Uh, gentlemen, um, you're that dead set against open grow, like corn and uh, anything else? For the time being, open grow is not permitted. It can only be grown in an enclosed building because, like I just said, we don't know what the real story is on odors. And in, the, in an enclosed building, the odors and light emissions can be very tightly controlled. And who, and, uh, who said this is an, an agricultural endeavor? I'm curious, who, what Be genius it. came up with that? <laughs> you know, it's a plant. So, it is a plant, but 
We're going to count how many. Plank you put in the ground. We're going to count how many angels could dance on the head of a pin here. Uh, the zoning act, Chapter 40A, has an exemption for agriculture. It says agriculture cannot be unreasonably regulated. Have which we right to farm by law. Well, it's more than the right to farm by law. It's the state zoning law that gives agriculture on a five acre or larger parcel uh, a virtual exemption on zoning. The chapter 40A, I think it's chapter section three, is uh, subjects which may be regulated. And um, so there's the agricultural exemption. When the referendum to allow adult growth or adult use passed, the, I think the one change that the state legislature made was to add in the enabling legislation that adult use marijuana essentially is not is is not sub is not entitled to the exemption the agricultural exemption from the zoning act so it is agricultural if we had no bylaw you could open grow in the agricultural residential district. But because it is not exempt from zoning under the agricultural exemption of the Zoning Act, we can impose, re, we can impose restrictions. They don't have to, you don't get into a question of whether it's unreasonable or anything. We can impose restrictions on the growth of this crop because the state legislature says it is not exempt from zoning. The way I read this bylaw, may, may I continue, sir? Yes, sir. Um, the way I read this bylaw, it looks like it's set up for corporate people to come in and raise, not for a guy here in town that's got a tractor and he's got land and he knows how to raise stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I don't use this stuff myself, okay? But I'm all in favor of opportunities for, for some of our agricultural people here in the town of Hatton. All right, thank you. Thank you. If I may reply. Certainly. Um, the we agree. Uh, we do. That's why we are allowing it in every zoning district, basically, except I think the residential, which is Meadowbrook and the streets around there. Um, the genesis of this restriction, this limitation on open growth, came directly from people who, whose homes were adjacent to active farmland and who were concerned about the impact of this product on their homes. Um, so in Hadley, roughly, we'll call 75% of the town is zoned agricultural residential, uh, which means you can have farms and uh, a street with 20 houses right up against each other. Um, the people who were concerned enough to come to our meetings were primarily residents who wanted to be sure that they were not going to have product growing right next to them. And hence the limitations on size and the setbacks for starters. As Jim said, we can, re we can come back to this next year depending on experience and depending on experience in other towns. But um, for right now, this is our opportunity to create some reasonable restrictions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Jim Didkevitz, Nine Old Mountain Road. Um, I just had uh, a couple of thoughts here. Um, and one thing, the idea that we can revisit this in a year based on our experience as a town. If you look at how the state has been approving licenses, there is likely not gonna be very many points of comparison, especially with outdoor growth in, in the state. So I think in a year, we're probably going to be right here in the same position. We can debate a lot of different things on this issue too. One thing we can't debate is that there is going to be money made from this project. 
from this product. Nothing's going to stop that. The only thing we can determine is who is going to make that money and where that money is going to be made. Is it going to be made in the town of Hadley by farmers who grew up here, who contributed to this town, and want to stay? Or are we going to add these sorts of regulations that put that sort of cultivation out of the reach of many of the family farmers of this town? 150 years ago, 90% of the people of this country were involved in agriculture. Today, that number is 10%. Family farms are going under everywhere. And it seems a bit schizophrenic to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of Community Preservation Act money to preserve farms. And then at the same meeting, pass laws that will make it difficult for working farms to continue. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Martin Vega, 36 Gold Court. Just want to get a little love out there for some skunks. Skunks don't stink. <laughs> and I also want to say that uh, are we going to vote about how bad manure smells? <laughs> Agriculturally exempt. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, this, uh, Michael uh, Treviso. I am uh, the farm manager and the head grower at Five College Farms. We What's your farm. address, please? Uh, my address is 319 River Drive. Thank you. Um, so I had a couple of comments and questions. One is. Uh, the way that this article is drafted, it appears that this is pretty similar to some of the articles that I've seen by other municipalities. And what this article does is it forces you to grow cannabis in a confined space where you are required to produce artificial lighting. So in, if you look at our facility, we put out about 181 micromoles per square meter. This is French to some people, but for our 50,000 square foot facility, we put out 394 kilowatts in one hour, 394 kilowatts of light. That's how much power it takes to produce about 181 micromoles per square meter on a one acre facility. When you grow cannabis, you wanna grow cannabis uh, in this kind of environment, you need to not only regulate your lighting, but you also need to regulate your temperatures. That means you have to use air conditioning to cool the room. That means you have to use fans or, or steam or, or some other fuel, uh, fossil-based fuel. Usually, uh, you could use wood chips as we do to heat the facility. Uh, but a cannabis, you want to use about four times as much light as we use, which would mean that you need about 800 to as much as 1,000 micromoles, which is five times more light because you do not have the sun. You only run that light for 12 hours because that's what actually controls your flower. While in our farm, we run it for 18 hours because we want to push production for tomatoes. So when you look at this bill, and, or this article, I'm sorry, what you're essentially saying is that you need to actually grow your cannabis in an enclosed facility. You're concerned with light pollution. I, I, I'm, that's what kind of got my attention when I saw this is because we produce more light pollution than cannabis would. Cannabis puts out 12 hours. You don't want more than 12 hours. Even in the middle of the summer, you have to actually use shade curtains to shut the greenhouse down and prohibit any light from coming in so that you can control your flowering and you get the right buds, which will increase your THC or CBD content depending on what you're looking for. Um, as far as smell, I grew three acres in Oregon um, it doesn't smell at all until you get to about the harvesting stage. Then it really starts to smell. But nobody ever complained about the smell. Um, what they complained about was the number of curious, curious folks that would come at night, uh, two-legged bandits that would come in and, and, and steal your crop. Uh, that was more of a concern than the smell. Uh, but yes, it does, it does smell. And, and when you harvest it, you, you stink and you can't really go anywhere without smell. Uh, that was my experience. I, I, I didn't like that part of growing cannabis. 
So uh, I'm not a cannabis grower. I did that while I was a student at Oregon State University, uh, working an internship at a farm in Philomath, Oregon. Uh, however, I, I can testify it, it, it does stink somewhat, but nobody really complained about it nearby. And it was mostly during the harvest when you really smell it. Uh, my other concerns is if we're going to do this and say, or, or write this article and say, well, noise, light pollution is an issue, it concerns me as a grower as to whether or not the community likes or does not like or negatively somehow, you know, the light that we put out. I've heard different feedback, but nobody has ever actually come to us and say, we don't like your greenhouse, we don't like your facility, you're, you're, you put out too much light. Um, we'd love to hear any comments. If anybody has any complaints, I, I, we would love to hear it. I'm not a citizen of Hadley. Uh, I live in Sunderland, so. Okay, I excuse work me. In you, you told me you said your address was River, your town address was River Drive. You have to be a voter to speak unless you get a. a uh, I, I was going sorry. there. I'm sorry. Thank I was you. actually asked to do that. Uh, should I be quiet now? Yes, I'm you sorry. should. Okay. You should have been quiet a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you Can for I, your information. Sorry, Mr. Waskevitz. John Waskevitz, 116 East Street. Uh, I'm not speaking for the board right now. Um, we've had tobacco grown before. We've had potatoes grown before. The manure smell in the spring and fall is quite overwhelming at times. Uh, I don't think the smell is a real issue. I, I've been adjacent to these fields for all these crops for all these years, and we've dealt with them because this is a farming community. Thank you. Mr. Horowitz. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. I've got a lot of feelings about this. Um, on the one hand, I see the issues that the farmers are bringing up. I respect that tremendously. I would love to see the small farmer with an acre or two um, getting involved in this crop, and I'm concerned that the regulation will make that difficult. On the other hand, I think leaving the town unprotected for a year while we figure out how to write a better bylaw is a really bad idea, uh, because this, this is a very, um, I'll make a little pun here, cannibalistic industry. Um, you know, I, I used to live in the neighborhood in Northampton that now has Nita, and I, I see what's going on in that neighborhood, and like, it's gridlock. I mean, you can't drive there, you can't walk there. Um, there and, and the issue about security. So, if these regulations are too tough for local farmers, I would suggest we pass this tonight and they can be working on some amendments to make this a law that, that works for them. In the meantime, nobody's growing pot in town, it's not a big deal. But I, I really don't want to see a situation where we have absolutely no regulation of this. There are issues around security, there are issues around exposure to children, there are issues about light and smell. I live on a, on a dairy farm, okay? I have lived there 20 years and I've smelled a lot of cow manure and now I sometimes smell methane. Um, it's one of the, the things that I was willing to do to move to the country from the big city of Northampton. Um, I, I think we want to be in a situation where we don't have the equivalent of the Chapter 40B railroading about affordable housing and I'm a supporter of affordable housing, but I'm not a supporter of affordable housing pushing out zoning regulations that are there for our protection just because uh, of the way the law is constructed for cities like Boston and Somerville and Cambridge and not for a town of 5,000 people that's mostly farm. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Ken Carter from Gooseberry Lane in Hadley. Um, I'd like to be really clear that first of all, you know, Hadley is a mixed agricultural and residential area. So it's not like many communities that have parcels set aside for people that live in a certain area and then farming and industrial. We're mixed use. I mean, there's only a very small portion of the town of Hadley actually that's zoned residential, okay? The issue with the bylaw, and I've been part of the, you're trying to help set up something that's fair, is that there are problems, there are a lot of unknowns associated with growing marijuana in an area like Hadley. It's loaded with unknowns. You hear stories about, oh, it stinks. Oh, it doesn't stink. Well, 
you know, I have been around grow operations and they do stick, okay? There's no doubt about it. But, you know, open grow, it's going to be incredible. There's people in Munson that have closed enclosed spaces that are complaining right now. If you actually go and Google complaints about marijuana cultivation, that's going to be the number one complaint that you see. Like the previous speaker said, all we're asking is that you give us time to figure this out, right? Because if we don't pass a bylaw, it's going to be the Wild West, okay? And once a facility actually is growing, it's almost impossible to stop it, right? You can't, you can't go to somebody that starts an operation and say, oh, we've changed our mind, we want to change the zoning, and you can't, you can't do that. Once it's, once it's open, it's a free-for-all. It, 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 there's no control. So all we're asking is for this particular bylaw to be approved, and then we can figure out all the things. Massachusetts jumped into this without understanding at all what they're doing. And now you're seeing community after community fighting each other, at, each other, at odds with each other, all for this promise of money that's probably going to evaporate once other states legalize anyway. So all we're asking for is pass this. It's not binding for the future of the, of, you know, for 10 years or anything like that. We can come back and revisit this if that's what we want to do. But if we don't do it, good luck. We're, we're, we are all doomed to whatever forces that are out there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Jerry Aldrich, One Morning Star Drive. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ken and Mr. Horowitz. Um, I share many of their sentiments on this, and I think the important one being, and, and I don't know whether it was mentioned earlier, uh, the reason that this bylaw becomes important at this time, and there really isn't any more time to work on it or tweak it or do anything else with it. The planning board has diligently spent, I don't know, I, eight, nine, maybe 10 months on it. Uh, they know better than, than I do about that. But the, the issue that we're, we're faced with is we have a moratorium which we've extended in this town uh, into the start of the summer. And if no zoning is in place by the start of the summer, then there will be no zoning, no regulation on this industry at all and you know we can we can talk about it being a, a fireman community and all of that and I think anyone who attended the planning board meetings realized that they are wholeheartedly in support of farming this in this town and the citizens that attended these meetings are as well and that's why you d d Tim Nyhart isn't hearing complaints because there's manure smells or tobacco smells or any of those we all embrace that that's part of what this all is but what we're looking to do is not end up in, this, in a, a situation like Charlton Mass has ended up in, or is, is, skirt, is, is trying to skirt, where people came into town. I mean, we've preserved 4,000 acres here for agriculture. Without zoning, uh, much any agricultural land, in theory, uh, can now become cannabis cultivation land, uh, which means we could have uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres and since Hadley did the right thing years ago and protected farmers interest in the land in Hadley when we were doing zoning and Dr. Zgrodnik is the expert on this because he may have been on the board then the zoning <laughs> board then but the the uh, <laughs> the the thing with our, our zoning here in Hadley is we carved out a very very tiny piece for residential uh, it encompasses I don't know, the equivalent of maybe four or five city blocks, probably. The rest, except for the Route 9 corridor and some on 47, is agricultural residential, which means we decided we were going to have allow both uses. So, these, so that preserved, rather than having just agricultural here and residential in certain places, that preserved a farmer's right to farm uh, right up to residences. And that was a good thing, because this is an agricultural community. But when these, all these house lots were, were sold off, they were sold off to individuals who said, yes, fine, we'll have tobacco and potatoes and sprays and all of this all the time. We accept that because we're moving into a farming community. Nobody anticipated that we would be moving into an area where perhaps there will be hundreds upon hundreds of acres 
of open grow openly cultivated marijuana by large corporations the small farmers aren't who's growing it in charlton there's large corporations have come in they've banded together to buy up three hundred and fifty acres was the last tally i had uh, a new avana uh, and they've uh, they're, they're splitting their licenses among another a number of different entities in order to have this massive agribusness in the there are no there is no local farm participation mm -hmm. this is a massive a massive thing that's gone on <laughs> if we pass this bylaw tonight this I, I i can tell you for sure that this planning board would be more than glad to revisit it if everything is all roses here a year from now uh, and i'm sure that, that 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 they'll come back before this this body and, and try to change things could you wrap it up please sir i, I gladly uh, but I'm asking you tonight to vote for this bylaw so that we have the time and that we don't end up turning this into the wild west of marijuana cultivation and have that be the principal crop that gets grown and has it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jeff Moss, 11 High Meadow Road. I would like a clarification, a legal clarification. Marijuana, from a federal standpoint, is still classified as a Schedule I drug. And uh, right now, the only thing that's uncertain right now is the level, uh, the politics of enforcement. But from a federal standpoint, it is illegal. Uh, I'd like clarification on, given that fact, what impact that might have on this article and on, on, the, uh, on ha the regulation in general in terms of uh, what's going on in Hadley. The only thing regarding the federal law is that um, Cannabis cannot be grown on APR land because it's got federal money on it. And that's only the present clause. Um, if the federal government changes their mind, obviously that'll be different. But that is the only impact that that has on this bylaw is that cannabis cannot be grown in any shape or form on APR land, either open grow or in a building. Thank you. Mr. Adams. Uh, David Adams, 97 Shattuck Road. Uh, I'd like to speak in strong support of uh, the approval of this zoning bylaw article. And I'd like to make one uh, very clear point about this, that the uh, bylaw under discussion here tonight has no impact on medical or personal marijuana used by adults. <coughs> personal marijuana is guaranteed under state law. Everybody's heard about the 12 plants per household. Not under discussion tonight, guaranteed by state law. Medical marijuana is treated under a separate bylaw in the town of Hadley. Anybody with medical marijuana, no impact on what's being discussed here tonight. Tonight's action does not change either of these. It only affects retail recreational marijuana establishments. I want to emphasize what several people have said about opening up the town of Hadley to the growth of, in sale of marijuana because if this bylaw does not pass and it fails, that could happen anywhere in this town. I think it's time to pass this bylaw and uh, work on changes at some time in the future. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to call the question. Okay. We have a motion to call the question. Okay. So how do I deal with that? Hang on just for a minute. Yes. So, Mr. Adams, you incorrectly called the question. You are not allowed to have a make a statement and then call the question, so I am not going to allow. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jennifer Hallwitt, 134 West Street. I just wanted to speak uh, in favor. Um, to start with restrictions and gain more information. I would like to know more about the dangers of um, people coming onto private property at night to go into fields um, where it's being grown. I'd like to know about the dangers of kids um, going into fields, Hopkins Academy abuts farmland. Um, so I think it's wise to start with restrictions and gain more understanding of what the risks are and then as um, we understand what those are, then restrictions can be lifted in the future. Thank you. 
Uh, you can, you've spoken already. Hang on just a minute, please. Yes, sir. S Stephen Herbert, uh, 81 Shattuck Road. I'd like to speak uh, uh, about some things that have been said. Um, you cannot grow acres and acres of cannabis in, or marijuana in Massachusetts. It's limited to 100,000 square feet, which is just 2.2 acres, and that is the maximum any group, person, entity can grow. So these corporations that think that they can buy up vast tracts of land and then parcel it out will not get through the Cannabis Control Commission, in my view. There is also considerable amount of money which the town could get from this cannabis. A tier one would only gain the town about $22,000, but a tier six would gain the town um, $270,000. And if you use blackout greenhouses, which block the light so there's no light pollution, then you could do two or three crops a year in those greenhouses, and you could get up to about $800,000 of tax revenue the town would uh, be able to collect. So I would like to um, offer an amendment that the tier levels for two to six be allowed in the AR zone. I'd like to amend that um, in, in this article so that we don't jeopardize the farmers who want to do some of this work. Thank okay, you. So if you want to make an amendment, I need it in writing. I will give you it in writing. Do you have it now? Uh, yes, I can tear this off here. I could make one other point that the present by, uh, bylaws that you have with the 300 foot setback would protect homes from this in their face. It would not be in their face. And farmers and the planning board could say, okay, let's try and get it back behind something so it's not right in the visible public. It has to be fenced so that children cannot get into it as and other people get into it. That's a requirement of the Cannabis Control Commission, which is very well regulated as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we have a motion to amend the table of uses to allow tiers two to six in the AR district. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Yeah. Okay, so discussion relative to the amendment. Mr. Maximowski. This would allow a large greenhouse in the ag residential districts that we were trying to avoid because according to, what, what is uh, level six? What's the maximum square footage? The person with the amendment should yes. know that. I don't know that off. Do not do not know that off the top of my head. What is a what is a level six, tier six, um, square footage? He doesn't know it either. No, no, that not that's not greenhouse. That is of marijuana facility. The greenhouse could be much larger. A thing for people to understand that when you um, have a square footage, it is not the square footage of the greenhouse, it is the square footage of the actual marijuana. So, they, so that a hundred thousand square foot of marijuana could conceivably be in a greenhouse significantly larger because they go by square footage of marijuana, not square footage of the grow facility or the square footage of the field so that 100,000 square foot marijuana um, floral is 
is bigger than that, and I don't know how much bigger than that because a lot of it depends on how they um, grow it. Okay. Tier, tier six is a 50,000 square feet of marijuana, and the facility could be more than likely much larger than that. That is a little over an acre of greenhouse. And what we're trying to avoid from the beginning is um, getting too big at the initial stages because we don't know what we don't know. Thank you. Mr. Parker. Ken Parker, 118 Mount Warner Road. Mr. Moderator, I move the question. Okay. Right, right, right. Mr. Parker, are you moving the amendment? Yes. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're moving, the, okay. I have a motion to move the amendment. And the regular motion. One at a time. Let's do one at a time, okay? Do I have a second to move the amendment? Yes, sir. Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Of moving the question, of moving the, question, the amendment. Moving the amendment. No. Uh, what are we voting on? We are voting to end debate. On? Everything? No, we're voting to end debate on the amendment. Right. So that's what that's we're voting for is to cut off debate, then we have a second vote on, on the amendment. Oh, okay. And then we go gotcha. back to okay. the original. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. so so we are voting on ending discussion on the amendment. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Now, vote on the amendment. Okay. Now, you vote now on. we're going to vote on the amendment. Okay. So now, do we have discussion on this? No. No. Okay. So, all those in favor, oh, move to amend the table of uses to allow tiers two to six in the agricultural residential district. So that's the amendment. Oh, because right now it's, it's, it's not, it's, it, 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 would, it would, okay. So we are now voting on the amendment, correct? <laughs> okay. Right, so a yes vote means it gets amended, amended, a no vote means it doesn't get amended. All those in favor of the amendment, Thank you. All those opposed? The amendment fails. Now we're back to the main question. Mr. Moderator. Ken, yes, sir. Ken Parker, 118 Mount Warner Road. I move the question. Okay, I have a motion to move the question. Rick Thayer, 179 Huckabee Mountain Road. I would like to move the question. <laughs> Okay, so we have, okay, we have a motion and a second to move the question. So now we are going to vote on the, okay, vote to, okay. Okay, we're gonna vote to stop debate on the question. All those in favor? Thank you, all those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, now we're going to vote on the question, which requires two thirds. Okay, uh, do, do we need to read it again? Are we all good? Okay, all those in favor of Article 27, signify by raising your card. Thank you, all those opposed? Keep your cards up please, I have to count. Okay, thank you. Motion passes 190 to 18. That's fun. Okay, last article. 
Article 28. Okay, Article 28 is a citizen's article and the motion will be by the petitioners. Tell me who you are, please. I don't have any motion. It's not, it says motion by petitioners, in mine, anyhow. Said the microphone's off. Mike, it's, it's not working. Uh, John, the microphone's not working. Pass. It's okay. Okay. You okay? It's working. Actually, let's go. Does anybody have a motion up here? You don't, well, we we don't have it. We don't have anything. Nobody up here has one. No, I have it. It was just a um, procedural misunderstanding. I thought you would read it and I would speak to it. I will read the petition and um, then I will speak to it. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Article 28, Town Meeting Hadley Citizens Article, resolution in support of changing the state motto and seal of Massachusetts. As the 400th anniversary of the landing of the Pilgrims at Patuxet or Plymouth approaches in 2020, citizens of the town of Hadley are called to support a statewide effort to change the current seal and motto of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The several versions of the Massachusetts motto and seal up to this date have been made without consulting the native communities of Massachusetts. Native nations in Massachusetts have long voiced concerns that the current motto and seal image are historically inaccurate, perpetuate harmful stereotypes, and disregard the perspective in native communities. In addition, many Massachusetts citizens believe that the existing motto and seal no longer represent our current understanding of our state's history or our values as a commonwealth. And um, if I can, I'd like to skip to the speech I was going to do, in, which is a continuation of this. Um, or do just read okay. it? Okay. You need, yeah, you okay. need to make a motion that the town move to vote in favor of your resolution. Oh, okay. Um, then I'll continue this. Massachusetts House Bill HD 2968 and the Massachusetts Senate Bill SD 1495 would set up a commission to investigate changes to the state motto and seal. The commission would include state legislators and at least five representatives of native nations within the borders of Massachusetts. Recommendations of that commission would have to be approved by the legislature in order to change the current state flag and seal. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Hadley, Massachusetts adopt this resolution in support of HD 2968 and SD 1495. In addition, be it resolved that the town of Hadley thank State Senator Joe Comerford for a co-sponsorship of um, the Senate resolution. Also, be it resolved that the town of Hadley requests that State Representative Dan Carey support um, the House resolution and vote for its passage in the general court. Okay, so now you need to make a motion to yeah. accept? Yeah, make a motion to um, accept this resolution. Okay. Okay. And I would like to speak to it. Okay, also. hold on one second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Go ahead, if you'd like. Okay. Um, I wanted to stress what's already been in the petition, that this resolution does not automatically change the flag seal or motto. In fact, it creates a commission that includes the executive director of the Commission on Indian Affairs, five members appointed by that commission, who are of lineal descent from tribes in Massachusetts. The executive director of the Massachusetts Historical Commission 
or a designee, the executive director of the Council on Arts and Humanities, or a designee, the chair of the Massachusetts Arts Commission, or a designee, the chair of the Mass Cultural Council, the House and Senate chairs of the Joint Committee on State Administration and Regulatory Authority, and two persons who shall be appointed by the governor. The committee will submit a detailed report with its proposals and recommendations to the legislature and to the governor who will vote on whether to approve any proposed changes. The report will also be made available to the public via the internet. My point in explaining this process is to note that any changes in our state flag, model, and seal will be the result of careful deliberation by many parties. Of prime importance is that this commission will mark the first time that people of native heritage are included in the discussion of our state flag, motto, and seal. I've heard from many people that changing the flag will erase or sanitize history. I contend that the process we are engaged in will add to and round out the historical record by taking into account the narrative and perspectives of native peoples. Furthermore, the discussions and decisions that ensue will all become part of our shared history. What we stand to lose is blind belief in certain founding myths. What we stand to gain is a real understanding of our past. I'm one of many people working statewide to support the state and house resolutions on this matter. There have been similar resolutions filed annually since 1984, all of which have sat in committee and have never gotten onto the floor for a vote. As a 400 year anniversary of the landing of the pilgrims at Patuxent or Plymouth approaches, Next year, it behooves Massachusetts to acknowledge its full history. Um, Elizabeth James Perry, an equine, a Wampanoag artist, has said, it is 2019 and the imagery should reflect our dignity, humanity, rights, and equality. Yvonne Abrams, in a um, Globe column, notes that this state was born and has thrived in part because of Native Americans' massive losses. Our flag ought to reflect the huge debt we owe them and the larger sense of who we are and want to be. I thank you for your attention and for staying so late at town meeting. Thank you. Diana West, 164 South Maple Street. I would like to speak in support of this initiative as a historian and a museum professional. It is a big push currently in the museum world, at least in New England and hopefully in the United States, to really include Native voices as we move forward with deciding how to keep our collections and how to include them, how to repatriate those collections. As we have seen internationally, that's really not happening in regards to the British Museum. And as has been said, Native voices have not been included on this issue and they are a part of this state. If the seal and this flag aren't representing everybody, then they really represent nobody. And as we can see in some southern states, the past has already been changed, and the flag and the seal have not remained the same throughout our entire history, so it really wouldn't be this really radical idea that we would want to move forward and adopt something that was more modern and contemporary to our society. And I'd also just like to reiterate the point that this is not binding, that we're just starting the process. We just want to get the commission off the ground and we want to hear from a more diverse group of people. Thank you. Andy. And Andy Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. First, I want to thank Michelle for uh, picking up this issue. She's really picked up the ball and moved it into the red zone, so I thank you for that. That's a football reference, sweetheart. Um, <laughs> The more you look at the Massachusetts flag, I'm afraid the worse it looks. Uh, you can see the person on the flag over there. I don't know if somebody wants to hold it out. Uh, besides the fact that the guy looks like he has an iron deficiency, um, it's really not a person. It's really a composite of three or four different people. The body of the person on the flag was exhumed without the family's permission to ensure historical accuracy. Um, I wouldn't be too happy if my grandfather's body was dug up and used as a model for an art project. Um, however, they were afraid that he wouldn't look Native American enough, and so they used the head of a person from Montana because he looked more like an Indian. Um, I think the Massachusetts flag should have 
a head of a person who's from Massachusetts uh, and not from Montana. Their flag doesn't have a Massachusetts head on it. Ours shouldn't have a Montana head. Um, the belt that he's wearing is based on Metacomet's red final belt. Metacomet led a rebellion against the English um, in 1675. After he was killed, the people of Plymouth put his head on a pike for 22 years outside of the town gates. Uh, I don't think they did that to honor him or the Native Americans, yet his clothing is depicted on the flag. We really need a flag that represents our modern values based on current historical scholarship. Uh, the last thing I would say is the reason why the Native American is shown holding an arrow is because his people got the shaft. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on, Shell, just a minute. Sure. Go ahead. wanted to take an excerpt out of uh, the newspaper that was in a couple of weeks ago. Just because there is a Native American on the flag doesn't mean it's derogatory. Massachusetts is an Indian word from the Algonquin Nation, meaning large hill place or at the great hill. The flag is a peaceful Algonquin Indian depicted by his arrow pointing downward. The motto says, by the sword we seek peace, but peace only under liberty but also means by his sword he seeks the calm repose of liberty. The motto and the sword are in reference to the American Revolution fought with England and nothing to do with the Native American on the flag. Everyone has their own interpretations, but could it possibly be paying tribute to the Algonquin Indians for giving us our state's name? Thank you. Shell. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. When I, back up, last month, I was really, really proud of Hadley because Hadley voted to repudiate racism. When I looked at, it's not so much the flag, but the state seal, and I see this, this conquering um, person of European ancestry, you know, lording it over this submissive Indian, I found that obscene. I think this commission is long overdue. Um, maybe if there's enough groundswell of support, it can finally get moved out of committee and be discussed in the Massachusetts General Court. And I thank Ms. Morris Friedman for bringing this forward, and I plan to vote yes. Thank you. Michelle, um, make it quick, please. We're yes, I wanted to address the point about you know, possibly no ill intent meant. Whether or not there was ill intent, Everything I've read, and I've read a lot, Native people in this state have said they find the image problematic and offensive and um, not historically accurate. There's a lot more that they say too. For example, the arm that's depicted was depicted specifically to be Miles Standish, who was a hero in my school book, learning as a child, but is somebody who's um, committed multiple murders and documented by um, colonists against the um, Native Americans. The other point I want to make, and this is very important. Quickly, please. Okay. There is a history in this country of people, of images that various groups have found offensive and derogatory to them. The groups that produce those images have often not considered those images offensive. I think you have to listen to the people who are being depicted and their opinions count. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'm going to call the question. Okay, I have a motion to call the question. Second. And a second. All those in favor of calling the question? All those opposed? Motion passes to call the question. Okay, now we're going to vote on the question, right? Right. Yeah. Vote on the question the, as read by petitioner. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Okay. I gotta. I need somebody to help me count. Where did the, all my counters go? They left. Good. Andy Klopaki, please. Count your side over there. Uh, 
Okay, we're gonna do this again. All those in favor, put your cards up and hold them up, please. That's, you guys can put your cards down over here. Okay, middle can put down. 13. Okay. okay, all those opposed? What's that? I got them. Okay, I have 63 in favor, 47 against. So, motion passes. Okay, yeah, anybody, before you, somebody wants to make a motion to dissolve, but before we do that, I would like to thank you all for staying. I would like to thank you all for helping me get through this evening. I appreciate it very much. Motion to dissolve. Second. All those in favor. Thank you again. Have a good night.